and welcome to the 2023 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour live from Virginia International Raceway. I'm Greg Ginsberg along with Brian Donati. And if you've been with us here all season long, of course, you know, you can chime in in the YouTube live chat. We're going to share some of your messages on the live stream, uh, especially on a very wet day <laughs> like today. Uh, the more people that, that will talk to us, Brian, probably the probably the better. Good afternoon and, and welcome to uh, once again a very damp Virginia International Raceway. Well, Greg, I don't think the weather has changed since I left here in October. And when I left here in October, it was doing the exact same thing, and now exactly. all of a sudden it's doing it again. So maybe it's me. I'm not sure. But this weather is only good if you're a duck. <laughs> yes, quack, quack, quack. Uh, welcome to all of our viewers here on YouTube. Uh, we are getting ready now, and uh, we've got drivers heading down the pit lane right now. Uh, and actually, we already have some drivers on course, as you can see, coming through uh, the NASCAR bend and through turn four for the second qualifying sessions of the day. Let me give you a little bit of a, a, a rundown here uh, of what our schedule is for the rest of the day and for the rest of the weekend. We started off the day with nine groups of qualifying. Of those nine groups, uh, the first four of them were in the dry. The last five of them were in the wet. And uh, those are the Q1 sessions uh, to set times with the exception of our Spec Miata group. Um, those, those qualifying sessions can be used to set the fastest lap for any of our two races uh, this weekend. Spec Miata in particular, which was our first qualifying session in the wet, Brian, uh, the qualifying session this morning was only for race number one, which will be tomorrow, uh, which will be a 20, uh, pardon me, a, uh, uh, four, uh, how long is it, 25-minute timed race. Uh, as our drivers are going out for qualifying, as you can see now, a very damp track here at Virginia International Raceway. And uh, this second qualifying session for, again, all groups except for Spec Miata, uh, Whichever is uh, the fastest qualifying session, whether it be the first qualifying session or this qualifying session, will set the grid for those groups. Again, 25 minute, uh, 25 minute timed race tomorrow, and the fastest qualifying session or race lap for all of those groups, except except for Spec Miata, will set the uh, the grid for Sunday's feature races, which are 14 laps or 35 minutes. For Spec Miata, again, a little bit different. Their morning qualifying session uh, set the grid for this uh, for tomorrow's 15, pardon me. Oh my gosh. You know, you might as well just get rid of me now. T tomorrow's 25, uh, 25 minute, minute race. race. Thank you. And the qualifying session this afternoon will set the grid in Spec Miata for the feature race uh, for the 14 lap or 35 minutes. Yeah, whichever comes first, that's on Sunday. Uh, so what we're expecting to see, and Brian, I'm, I'm actually a little bit surprised by the number of small war entries, our very first group, E Production, F Production, H Production, GT Lite, and B Spec. I'm a little surprised at how many drivers have gone out for this qualifying session because they were out in the dry this morning. I mean, the, the but you know, then again, there's, a, there's I think good reasoning for this because not only are we supposed to have rain, uh, rain this, this afternoon, but there's a very heavy chance of rain tomorrow and some of these drivers may not have any rain laps. They've, they've already set the grid for the most part for tomorrow's race, but now they need practice in the wet here at VIR. Yeah, I, I think, you know, as you said, it, and it wasn't completely dry this morning. It was damp, so we'll, we'll use that word because that seems to be the theory of, of so far this weekend. What I'm really shocked at, Greg, is we did have 41 cars that took a time this morning. I want to see how many cars go out here. The other interesting thing that I'm seeing right now on the screen is how many open top cars we have that are out. I didn't think we'd have that many open top cars go out in this group to, uh, you know, in this rain. It stopped for a little while. We probably had maybe, what, 30 minutes where it just really didn't rain at all. Right. And now all of a sudden, right as this, uh, you know, group started to get on track, it's pouring now. So you can see on your cameras, uh, cameras, it is really raining probably as hard as it has really since last night since the thunderstorm. So yeah. it's going to be interesting in this second round. All right, so let's, uh, let's quickly give a quick rundown. Uh, quickly give a quick rundown of our first qualifying session for small bore. Uh, we'll try to break this down by class. Uh, in e-production, uh, our fastest driver in class, and he was fastest overall in the session, was Greg Ira out of uh, Fort Lauderdale. And uh, nice story here uh, with Greg, who for years ran in production car classes in a Datsun 240Z. He has now taken on 
uh, the BMW Z3 convertible that Jesse Prather has won multiple national championships with, and I believe two in, uh, two in a row uh, with that car. And uh, Greg Ira was your fastest seat production driver, almost nine tenths up on the rest of the field uh, and nine tenths up on Peter Norton in his, uh, in his Caterham. Uh, third fastest in e-production, Doug Piner, also in a BMW Z3 out of uh, Hempstead, North Carolina. Uh, Piner, a 209, 374, so almost, uh, almost uh, what we're looking at, about four and a half seconds off of Ira's pace. In F-production, Cliff Ira uh, was your fastest driver, and uh, Cliff uh, driving the 1996 Honda Del Sol and uh, Honda Civic Del Sol. This is a car that he has been racing for a couple of years now, and he was, uh, I think, really considered to be a shoe-in a couple of years ago at, uh, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway until it rained um, and uh, had some issues uh, with uh, braking, I believe, in that car. But Cliff was our fastest up-production driver, a 208-238. 208, that was actually third fastest of anybody in the session. Charlie Campbell in his Mazda Miata out of Corey, Pennsylvania. A 210, 255, so almost two seconds, uh, or uh, yeah, almost two seconds off of Ira's times. Uh, and then Mason Workman, uh, who is uh, always very strong in the wet in his Mazda Miata. Mason, a 210, 426. Uh, in H production, fastest driver on track was Mike Ogren, who we saw. Uh, we saw to open the season in Sebring was very strong in his Volkswagen Scirocco. He's out of Dunedin, Florida, and uh, he turned in a 216 flat uh, where Will Perry out of Solid Creek, Tennessee in his Honda CRX uh, was at a 217 flat. Uh, so uh, just about a full second uh, separating Ogren and uh, Perry, and we're getting a black flag. Uh, Brian, as we've got a couple of cars that have gone off track here, and I think there's at least one uh, that is in a uh, – where our uh, volunteers consider to be in a, uh, uh, a difficult position. Uh, third fastest H production driver in his, uh, uh, in his bug eye sprite, Eric Vickerman, uh, and uh, out of the Detroit region with a 218-331, so considerably off that pace. In GT Light, Graham Fuller, uh, fastest driver – in his uh, Honda CRX out of Summer Point, West Virginia, coming off of two wins last week at the Summer Point Majors. And uh, he is uh, looking at a time of 213-160. Meanwhile, as I'm sure you can imagine, nobody's getting anywhere near these times right now, Brian. No. Uh, and, uh, and our second fastest driver in GT Light, and actually this is a, a, a rematch from last week at Summer Point, uh, Ken Burdine uh, in his MG Midget at a 245 and change so uh you know we're looking at uh well about 30 seconds separating those two drivers and in b-spec uh reigning national champion steven trone after having come off a, a a win and a second place at summit point your fastest b-spec driver at a 225 flat blair deffenbaugh coming off a second place finish at uh, michelin raceway road atlanta on the last stop of the super tour blair uh second fastest at a 226.6 he's got a lot of uh, a lot of seat time here at Virginia International Raceway. And uh, then Luke Russell, uh, who also uh, performed very well at Road Atlanta uh, in his Mazda 2 out of Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, he had a time of 227.335. All right, real quick, Brian, uh, I know it took us half a session seemingly to, to just run down and recap uh, the last session, but uh, let's quickly make a call to the grid for our next group. Attention in the paddock, attention in the paddock. First call to the grid for race group number two. That is Formula F, Formula V, and Formula 600. If you could please start heading to the grid. Race group number two, Formula F, Formula V, and Formula 600. Please head to the grid.
here. And again, we are underneath a black flag, all conditions. Evidently, we got a few cars that are uh, kind of off course, need to get them moved. Everybody coming down pit road, as I talked about earlier uh, a couple minutes ago, some of these open top cars, a lot of them are starting to head back again. It's really starting to rain here again, uh, even harder. We had 41 cars, as I mentioned early on, regarding uh, going out for the morning practice. Well, right now we're sitting at about 27. So you can tell the weather has really, really, actually we got 32 now that have actually been on course and uh, at least taken uh, somewhat of a lap, not a full lap. Uh, 27 have taken a complete lap. And then we have another five additional cars that started to get their lap uh, before they ended up going out. So. Again, you know, those uh, those times that Greg was talking about a couple minutes ago, Greg Ira, you know, is setting the top in his e-production machine. Uh, we're in a 204 this morning. Again, very damp conditions right now, kind of almost in the three-minute mark. So you can see that the weather actually is deteriorating. Um, and right now you can see there on your screen that we have got one of the, you know, one of the, you know, Christmas colors that, that, it's not Christmas time here, and the big yellow coming up. That is a big, huge uh, cell of rain that is coming. I think once we get through that, then it should lighten up a little bit. Not going to stop raining, but it will rain a little bit. So as cars are sitting down here on the uh, pit road here, getting ready to go back out, hopefully we can get those cars uh, moved kind of quickly so that we can get this section back in. Still got about 13 and a half minutes, uh, about 13 minutes and 15 seconds uh, left in this second round for Group 1, our small group. We'll have to see. It looks like uh, as we're going up the S's, up the climbing S's, you can see there over on the left-hand side there, we do have a car that's kind of really far off and it's probably struggling to get it out because of the rain uh, and the mud that is happening. So we'll hopefully get them uh, moved kind of quickly and then uh, we can get back to this, uh, this second round for group one. Um, again, all day yesterday, perfect weather, nice out here. It actually was kind of warm and hot. So these cars were out here practicing yesterday, um, you know, and, and running some pretty decent times based off of when I got here uh, yesterday afternoon. Um, anything you learned out of there? Yeah, just throw it out the window because the rain just doesn't, you know, uh, a couple people in the uh, chat trying to talk about finding grip. Well, I can tell you right now, there is zero grip out here and it's gotten a lot colder. So, you know, the temperatures are continuing to drop, uh, you know, ever so slightly all day long. I think we started out this morning when everybody first got up. It was in the 60s uh, when this first group went out this morning at uh, between 8 and 8.15. Right now, we're only in the 40, low 40s, and that's because of the rain and everything else. So, um, again, this is uh, this track does have some slick spots in there where the where water will puddle up a little bit. Uh, looks like we got some action there on the top of the back stretch as well, uh, kind of off to one of the sides. We've got a couple uh, emergency vehicles there on the top, but we will uh, we'll see whether or not how quickly they can get them moved. It's just out of the camera range, so we'll have to. Uh, determine how quick that is, but the rain continues to fall. I think it's one of the hardest that it's been. Um, good thing is, is the wind is not as bad. So um, again, with really not really having any action on course right now, the only thing to talk about is the, uh, is the weather. So, um, you know, I can tell you right now, looking at some of the cars that are sitting out here, there's about one, two, three, four, there's about 10 cars still waiting to go out. Again, all, uh, all uh, 10 top cars, there is one car out here, which is the uh, number 50 machine, and I believe that is going to be, let me see here, that's actually Peter Norton sitting there, uh, got his umbrella person there holding the umbrella over the cockpit of that car, but everybody else that had an open, uh, open cockpit car that, that we talked about earlier on, they have all decided to call it quits here, and uh, especially for this session. Uh, it is the, like I said, one of the hardest rains that's coming down since last night. So we'll have to, uh, we'll see. Again, the time is starting to really run down here with about 10 and a half minutes right now to go. Uh, we will, uh, we'll see whether or not they continue this session or not. Right now, all indications are they're going to try to get it out, um, you know, get the cars back on course, but we'll... Uh, We'll see what uh, see what happens here with just about ten minutes left to go, Greg. All right, Brian. So uh, while we've uh, while we've got uh, the track under black flag conditions right now, let's do this. Why don't we take a quick break? We're going to thank some of our partners and sponsors that are bringing you live coverage here from a very damp Virginia International Raceway, and we'll be right back.
Hoosier Racing Tire is proud to be the presenting sponsor of SECA's Super Tour. Hoosier's mission is to be the dominant, customer-driven provider of tires to race teams domestically and internationally. Realizing Hoosier's existence and continued success is dependent upon how well we meet our customers' expectations by providing the safest, most reliable, high-quality race tires that put you in the winner's circle. For more information, see one of our trackside support personnel or the local Hoosier Tire racing dealer nearest you, or contact us at HoosierTire.com. Hoosier Racing Tires, truly designed for champions. Haggerty is the official and exclusive insurance partner for the Sports Car Club of America. Haggerty provides affordable off-track insurance protection for motorsports vehicles while in the paddock, in transit, in storage, and at the shop. They provide guaranteed value coverage and even have protection for your trailers. SCCA members can save 5% on insurance through Haggerty. Learn more at Haggerty.com. Haggerty, let's drive together. Ready for a new race trailer? Bravo Trailers is the exclusive trailer partner of the SECA. Owned by longtime SECA racers, Bravo Trailers work better, load easier, and tow better because we build them with racers in mind. Visit bravotrailers.com to see your new trailer in aluminum or steel. For over 25 years, championship-winning drivers and teams have demanded Hawk Performance Motorsports brake pads. Now you can have their advanced technology on your daily car, truck, or SUV with Hawk Performance Street products. With the improved HP Plus pad for that hybrid street and track feel, or Super Duty pads for tow vehicles, their all-new ER1 brake pad designed to take on even the longest race, and their all-new high-performance brake fluid, Hawk has all of your braking needs covered. Visit hawkperformance.com and like them on Facebook or Instagram to learn more about the Hawk Performance Advantage. Hawk Performance, what's stopping you? Welcome to the 2023 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour, where we bring together top SCCA road racers from around the country to compete in the premier amateur road racing series. The Hoosier Super Tour visits some of the greatest racetracks in North America, showcasing our, showcasing our 27 car classes and packing a ton of wheel-to-wheel -wheel action into every event. And you can now enjoy live streaming coverage of Hoosier Super Tour events on site or from the comfort of your own home. Find those details and more at scca.com front slash live. And if you are here at the track at Virginia International Raceway and you want to stay in your trailer, if you want to stay in your car, if you want to stay in the lodge anywhere nice and warm and dry, you can also pick up our broadcast on 89.9 FM here at Virginia International Raceway. And so, Brian, looks like we have uh, picked up uh, a car and uh, you can see it there uh, making the, uh, the one of the cars. We've got uh, one on the flatbed and you can see a lot more emergency services vehicles right up at the top of Madison Avenue. And uh, hopefully we'll be getting back underway here in just a few moments. As the clock continues to run, we are uh, about uh, about uh, 18 minutes in this 25 minute session. Brian, really quick, let me make another call to the grid for our next group. And uh, then we will run down the order as most of our drivers have either gotten only two flying laps or possibly one flying lap in this session. Attention in the paddock, second call to the grid for race group number two, Formula F, Formula V and Formula 600. If you can please start heading to the grid, Race group number two, Formula F, Formula V, and Formula 600, please head to the grid. All right, so, Brian, let's take a look, and uh, we'll go, and uh, since I know we're having uh, some issues with our timing tower here, uh, we'll uh, give you a rundown and let you know exactly where we stand here in qualifying. And I'll try to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, merging to, to give you an idea <laughs> compared to, to compared to our first uh, qualifying session. Actually, I don't think there's going to be much merging necessary. Uh, fastest e-production time at the moment: Jonathan Newdorf in the number 55 e-production Mazda Miata. He's out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, Greg Ira, uh, second fastest. Uh, the time for Newdorf, a 239.116. Greg Ira, a 247 flat. And uh, just to put things in perspective, uh, Greg Ira was uh, two, about 43 seconds faster this morning. Uh, and Newdorf at a 239. Uh, he is about 35 seconds off of Ira's uh, provisional poll time. Uh, Peter Norton, third fastest at a 256.7 in his Caterham 7, and then we have Don Tucker in his Mazda Miata at a 305, Doug Piner, uh, who came into this session as the third fastest e-production car, uh, currently fifth fastest on track, and uh, 
with a time of 311 and change. So quite a bit off. In F production, it is. And uh, Brian, getting word they're going to be displaying the checkered flag. Uh, doesn't look like we're going to be able to get our cars back out with about, only about four four and three quarter minutes left to go on the clock that uh, I don't think they're going to be able to get another lap in. Uh, in F production, Cliff Ira fastest at a 249.901. So uh, uh, almost 40 seconds off. And, and Brian, this is uh, something interesting that we have not seen. Uh, we had received word of it from one of our corners, but as I look out the window directly in front of us, not just rain, but hail here at Virginia International Raceway. And it is, it's is—it's 48 degrees, so we're quite a bit above freezing, but uh, weather conditions getting awfully um, challenging. Oh, well, they're deteriorating yes. by, by the minute here. I mean, again, like I said earlier, it, you know, it, we went you know, 30 minutes where we didn't really have any rain and, you know, our last qualifying group was starting to dry it out and then all of a sudden as this one got going again, it really started raining heavily and it's been doing that way ever since. So, um, yeah, they're just going downhill. All right, let's uh, finish here uh, real quick. Uh, Brian in GT Lite, Graham Fuller, your fastest driver. And uh, and give me one half second here as our timing and scoring has uh, switched up. And I'm going to try and get the, uh, the second, uh, if I can grab it here, hopefully be able to grab our uh, second one here. Um, oh, actually, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to be able to give you <laughs> our our F production or H production, but I can I could tell you uh, in F production, fast driver once again uh, was Cliff Ira and in an H production it was again Mike Ogren in the wet. So uh, let's do this, Brian. We've got uh, a five minute warning being given on the grid for our small our first of three open wheel groups. It's going to be Formula F, Formula V, and Formula 600. But before we do that, we're going to take another quick break. Thanks to our partners and sponsors. And when we come back, more uh, damp action here from Virginia International Raceway. Hold tight, everybody. Tire Rack was established over 40 years ago by an SECA member with a passion to find the right tires, wheels, brakes, and suspension products for racers and enthusiasts both on the street and on the track. As official tire retailer of Sports Car Club of America since 1995 and sponsor of the Runoffs Pole Award, along with the National Solo Program, Time Trials Nationals and National Tour, and Track Night in America, Tyrac is proud to support the SCCA and its members as they go have fun with cars. Mazza Vineyards is the exclusive sparkling wine for podium celebrations at the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour, SCCA Runoffs, and Tire Rack SCCA Pro Solo. Celebrate your racing weekend with Mazza Vineyards and learn more at enjoymazza.com. Summit Racing Equipment, the official high-performance source and proud sponsor of the SCCA Road Racing Program, is celebrating its 55th anniversary as the world's speed shop. Haggerty is the official and exclusive insurance partner for the Sports Car Club of America. Haggerty provides affordable off-track insurance protection for motorsports vehicles while in the paddock, in transit, in storage, and at the shop. They provide guaranteed value coverage and even have protection for your trailers. SCCA members can save 5% on insurance through Haggerty. Learn more at Haggerty. Haggerty.com. Haggerty, let's drive together. Hoosier Racing Tire is proud to be the presenting sponsor of SECA's Super Tour. Hoosier's mission is to be the dominant customer-driven provider of tires to race teams domestically and internationally. Realizing Hoosier's existence and continued success is dependent upon how well we meet our customers' expectations by providing the safest, most reliable, high-quality race tires that put you in the winner's circle. For more information, see one of our trackside support personnel or the local Hoosier Tire racing dealer nearest you, or contact us at HoosierTire.com. Hoosier Racing Tires, truly designed for champions.
and welcome back to Virginia International Boat Racing. I mean, Virginia International Raceway. <laughs> I'm Greg Ginsberg along with Brian Donati, and we're bringing you day one from uh, beautiful, damp, um, really damp Virginia International Raceway for the 2023 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. And we've got our uh, second afternoon qualifying session heading out on track right now for those brave souls in Formula B, Formula F, and Formula 600. I just saw Calvin Stewart go out, Greg. He's got a snorkel and an air tank on, so he's ready to roll. <laughs> it's like uh, it's like going out with a Jeep or something, yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, they're going to go out for a 25-minute qualifying session. This is their second qualifying session of the day. Uh, fastest times from this morning in the dry or this afternoon in the wet. We'll set the grid for this for tomorrow <laughs> mornings, uh, for tomorrow morning's 25-minute uh, timed race. So uh, quickly here, uh, let's take a look and see how things ended up this morning. And I guarantee you, we're not going to have drivers uh, turning anywhere near the lap times that they turned this morning. We had 16 drivers head out on track. We had uh, two Formula 600s. We had three Formula Fs. And a, uh, a boatload, maybe that's the wrong term to use Ooh. today, uh, 11 Formula Vs, uh, fastest driver of uh, this entire group, uh, and our Formula 600 provisional pole sitter from Novi, Michigan, is Calvin Stewart. He had a provisional pole time, 159.991. Let's just call it a two-minute even. Uh, Jonathan Kotick, multi-time national champion in Formula F, was our second fastest driver overall. Uh, and uh, representing the uh, Buccaneer region of the SCCA at 201.211, his fastest time uh, very closely, uh, followed by David Adorno in the number 84 uh, Formula F, Miguel, and uh, he, he ran a 202.986, so almost 1.7 seconds off of Codex times. Uh, in Formula V, fastest driver, Jeff Vallejo out of Brooklyn, New York, running, running for Advantage Motorsports in his Mysterian, turned in a 219.143, while Donnie Isley was about, uh, about seven tenths off. He ran a 219.815. Jonathan Weishite, who uh, Brian and I saw just last week at Summer Point Raceway, uh, took double wins at the point, a 220.007, uh, a little James Bonding there, called a 220 flat, but uh, uh, still pretty darn close. And as we, we take a look at the, a good portion of the Formula V field, uh, most uh, our top six drivers all within uh, about two seconds or so here over uh, 3.27 miles, 17 turn. Virginia International Raceway. Well, you know what, Greg, as we talked about, you know, they had damp conditions this morning when they went out. Nothing like they're going to do now. And I think one of the biggest challenges here is that, you know, when you put rain tires on, you kind of really want to make sure you get into the rain line of where you're going to be. Well, throw that completely out the window again here. And I know I'm, I'm stating the obvious, but you know, everything is a rain line yes. right here, but you can run the normal line that you would run dry here. Now, it could be a little bit more slipperier with, you know, with the rain tires on because you get, you know, it gets worn down. The, sure. the asphalt gets worn down a little bit. So at that point, you're, you know, Formula V, you want to have a partner. Well, you know, again, throw that out the window. Just go out and try to get yourself a good lap. Try to set yourself up. You're not going to come close to where you are now. So kind of run your, you know, run just to get a feel from the car you're more than likely going to have a rain race tomorrow anyway, right. right? So at that point, you know, you can get settled back in. But right now, it's just getting through the gears, getting through everything, uh, and just making sure that the car is going to be okay in the wet. Then you got to bring it in. you got to really dry it off because, you know, as well as I do, when you get Formula Vs and even Calvin Stewart in that Formula 600, it's going to get wet, right? Yeah, so. absolutely. And you want you need to make sure that... Uh, that some of those things are dried out, that you, you don't want to have any either electrical issues, you don't want to have any mechanical issues because you've had uh, humidity or you've had water seep into places where they just do not belong uh, during the race. All right, so uh, we're now, uh, we're starting to see some of our drivers uh, come across the start finish line to complete their first flying lap. We only had six cars originally leave the grid to set times. Jonathan Coton. Uh, David Adorno, uh, our two fastest Formula F drivers. Calvin Stewart, who was, our, again, our fastest driver this morning uh, in Formula 600 in his, uh, his Novacar Blade F600. Uh, Trevor Carmody, Michael Hinkle, 
went out as well in Formula V. And uh, I believe we also had Russell Strait go out uh, to start the session. I have not seen uh, the number 47 Formula 600 come back across the line. Now, uh, let's take a look, because I did not mention where Carmody and Hinkle finished up uh, in the dry. Uh, Trevor Carmody was our fifth fastest Formula V this morning in qualifying at 220.828. Uh, Michael Hinkle uh, was our 11th fastest Formula V uh, with a 233.364. But yeah, again, you know, for many of these drivers, well, they weren't here at the national championship runoffs in October where it rained all weekend long practically. Uh, but uh, yeah, a lot of these drivers, they don't have any kind of uh, experience at all at VIR in the rain. And this is going to be the, the, the great opportunity for them to experiment uh, and, and try to figure out wh where, they, where they do have grip, where they don't have grip. And, you know, and possibly try to, to figure out ways that if they get into close quarters tomorrow where there is about a, I think we said, what, about a 90% uh, chance of rain tomorrow? If I remember yeah, right. I think overall, you know, we're going to get rain. It's yeah. not like we're not going to have it, but I think it's periods of rain. And I don't, don't, don't believe it's going to be anything like we're going through today. I think today the bigger cells are what's really moving in. Um, you know, through here and through the through the city, um, but I think that at some point it's going to die out just a little bit. The good thing about this, Greg, is that the winds are not as bad, right? right. The winds are really, really down. I think if we had a lot of wind and the rain. I think it would make it almost impossible. It would be impossible in some of these areas. Because this, this track has so much undulation all the way through, it really does have some standing water across it. Indeed. All right, Brian, real quick, let me make a, call, a first call to the grid for our next qualifying grid. Attention in the paddock. Attention in the paddock. First call to the grid for race group number three. That's touring two, touring three, and touring four. If you could please start heading to the grid. Race group three, touring two, touring three, and touring four drivers. If you could please start heading to the grid, your qualifying session is next. Plus, Brian, they, they have roofs on their cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, again, this has got to be one of the most difficult. I've never driven an open wheel, you know, an open car with an open cockpit. Um, but I, I got to tell you, it, it's got to be unbearable in there right now. Yeah. You know, because not only, you know, you're getting rain all in the car, but, you know, you're getting soaking wet. That's got to be the most uncomfortable thing to wear. Uh, and then you got to come back in. Or, you know, again, there's not enough humidity. You can't hang it up to dry. So what do you do with it? Uh, find right? a dryer. I mean, it, it's, it, uh, and tumble on on <laughs> gentle or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. Well, it, interestingly, is as, as we had the downtime here, Brian, and we had these six drivers sitting up on the grid with, and and they had crew up there, thankfully, with umbrellas for most of them. But uh, you know, they they would have been up there for a very long time. They're for many, many years here at Virginia International Raceway from the time they had reopened the facility, there was a big overhang, uh, basically a, a roof across the entire grid area here. And uh, a year and a half ago, it was taken down. So now it's just a big open asphalt area. And and so, you know, whereas these, these drivers and maybe even their crew would have had some protection from the elements while we had that extended downtime uh, as uh, the reconnaissance laps were going on, uh, all they had was that umbrella and maybe a rain and maybe a, a raincoat for the crew or something along those lines. Yeah, I mean standing out there, I know that there's a couple, you know, couple canopies that they have up there, obviously for the workers, for the grid, and stuff like that. And so what ends up happening is, like you said, Greg, it's it is still kind of you know difficult. You take that, you know, you take that bridge or, or that cover out, and it does one of two things. One. You have it during the summertime when it's really, really hot here. It provides a little bit of shade plus some of the protection from the weather. Now it's gone. There's nothing there. That asphalt gets hot in the summertime and really, really wet here in April, it seems. And I guess they, I guess it is true down here at uh, VIR. April showers do bring May flowers because it has rained for the last three years we've been here. At every single time. All right, so, uh, Brian, we have a, uh, a latecomer uh, to the uh, session here. It is driver the number 42. Formula V, that is Nate Ryder out of uh, Williamsburg, Virginia. And uh, let's see, Nate was our 10th fastest driver uh, in Formula V this morning. He's from uh, Williams, Williamsburg, Virginia, and uh, great sponsor. 
It's his kid's inheritance, so uh, nice to know that. Uh, <laughs> nice to know that uh, his son will be uh, uh, heading to a state school, I guess, at Virginia this year uh, when he grows up. <laughs> well, he was letting the first six cars dry out the dry out the rain or dry out the line here before he went out and get rid of the puddles there. So exactly. All right, and so uh, uh, real quick. Uh, uh, the folks uh, that are working with us on today's broadcast, Brendan Kesmerick from uh, Drivers Eye Live, our producer, uh, talking a little bit about the timing tower that we've got the, on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, the uh, the timer at the top, the uh, the countdown timer. Obviously, uh, we don't have an hour thirty-seven uh, <laughs> remaining in this session. Uh, but if we did, well, I, I guarantee you our Formula V, Formula 600 folks probably wouldn't be out there for it. Uh, but the positioning right now, based on Fast lap times Oops. in the session is We have correct. one right there coming out of a hog pin, getting ready to go on the front stretch all the way over to driver's left. And uh, if he wasn't wet before, he's definitely wet now. Well, that is one of our two Formula F drivers. And I think based on the light-ish color and based on the other Formula F that drove, just drove by, that is David Adorno, driver of the number 84 uh, Pelfrey machine who's trying to work his way back out onto the uh, the pavement here. Well, that may actually be Jonathan Kotek in there. Nope. Is that is that Adorno? Yeah, that is Adorno. It's got a yellow, in the, and, a, it's the got yellow, yellow and a black. So the, that the the 84 is uh, the yellow 84, and Kotek is in a black machine. Uh, is in the black 08. Yeah, which is that right there. So oh. that was oh, you're that right. was Jonathan Kotek. That was Kotek. So there you go. All right. So see, I can see a few things through the raindrops, but it's a oh good thing gosh. they cleaned the window. Thank God. I'm, thank God I've got you here, Brian. <laughs> good thing I got my glasses on today. That's, <laughs> that's what I forgot. Because I can't see anything up close, but I can sure see Jonathan Kotek <laughs> way down. All right. So so let's let's try this again. Adorno, black eighty four, Kotek, yellow yellow eight. Oh, wait, and I think they're both driving for Pelfrey Motorsports yes. uh, this weekend. So oof. Yeah. There you go. Take away my announcer card. Uh, nope. <laughs> I thought they would have done that after last week, you know. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's do this, Brian. Let's uh, thank some of our uh, partners and sponsors here that are bringing us the Super Tour. Uh, but before we do that, I want to make another call to the grid for our next group. Attention in the paddock. Attention in the paddock. Second call to the grid for race group number three. Touring two, touring three, and touring four. Please start heading to the grid. Race group number three, T2, T3, and T4, if you could please start heading to the grid. So let's take that quick break, and when we come back, we'll have more qualifying action here from Virginia International Raceway, where you're watching the 2023 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. We'll be right back. For more than 100 years, Sunoco, SCCA's official fuel partner since 2001, has been fueling victories both on and off the track, which is why Sunoco has trusted to fuel over 50 series of racing, driving, and winning, including the SCCA National Championship runoffs, SCCA Pro Racing, Trans Am, NHRA, and NASCAR. To find race gas near you, visit SunocoRaceFuels.com or call Sunoco at 800-RACE-GAS. Ready for a new race trailer? Bravo Trailers is the exclusive trailer partner of the SECA. Owned by longtime SECA racers, Bravo Trailers work better, load easier, and tow better because we build them with racers in mind. Visit bravotrailers.com to see your new trailer in aluminum or steel. For over 25 years, championship winning drivers and teams have demanded Hawk Performance Motorsports brake pads. Now you can have their advanced technology on your daily car, truck, or SUV with Hawk Performance Street products. With the improved HP Plus pad for that hybrid street and track feel, or Super Duty pads for tow vehicles, their all new ER1 brake pad designed to take on even the longest race, and their all new high performance brake fluid, Hawk has all of your braking needs covered. Visit hawkperformance.com and like them on Facebook or Instagram to learn more about the Hawk Performance Advantage. Hawk Performance, what's stopping you? Get more bang for your buck at summitracing.com. Choose from millions of in-stock parts from over 1,500 named brands, parts for racing, street performance, trucks, plus tools, accessories, and more. If you like what you see here today, become part of the action by joining Sports Car Club of America. Whether you want to drive, flag, or just have fun with cars, SCCA membership opens the door to all kinds of motorsports to feed your obsession, along with 65,000 like-minded members ready to be friends. Ask somebody trackside how to get involved or visit scca.com for more information. 
So we are back here at Virginia International Raceway for the 2023 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. I'm Greg Ginsberg along with Brian Donati. And uh, Brian and I have, uh, while we were at break there, we uh, went back to make sure that uh, our canoes paddles were all ready to go. And, uh, you know, we're just waiting in case somebody goes off at turn one and, and they need help down by the Dan River. We're going to be ready. I brought the little boat, the little motor boat, so we, we, can, we can take the motor. <laughs> Oh, that's even better. I'm not paddling anything today. <laughs> <laughs> too, too much work. All right, so let's uh, recap here. Uh, as we did have, I believe, I believe it was the uh, the the 37 machine that went spinning down the uh, the roller coaster while we were at break. Uh, but uh, currently, in Formula F, fastest driver on track is Jonathan Kotek, two-time national champion, with his. Uh, Miguel SJ13, a 232-135, the fastest time. Uh, and David Adorno, uh, teammate there in the number 84 car, a 235-924, his fastest time. To put things in perspective, um, Brian, those times about 35 seconds off of what they did in the dry earlier today. Uh, in Formula 600, our, uh, we've got Calvin Stewart and Russell Strait out on track stewart who was our fastest driver this morning uh turned in it has in this session put in a 258.2 uh that is almost exactly a minute off of where he was uh earlier today he ran he ran a, a two minute flat uh earlier today uh rust straight with a 337 586 and i can only imagine uh that those formula 600 cars must be very difficult all of the cars in this group must be having and drivers must be having a very difficult time in formula v fastest driver michael hinkle uh hinkle was 11th fastest this morning he ran a 233.3 in the uh in the dry uh he's at a 30 uh, 310 so you know again all you know we're talking half a minute plus for each one of our drivers here this uh, this afternoon is uh, it looks like we've had a driver that uh, at least temporarily went off at one and Nate Nate Ryder just some ash shoes over there and uh, he has managed to uh, to get back out on the track surface and is continuing. Yeah, you take a look at them coming through three there, which is the NASCAR bend. I tell you what, it's you know if you get really wide out of there, it is nothing but you know the splash that comes through and then you get the you know the heat from the motor. Uh, looks worse than it really is, and it's, it's just a matter of the way that they're they're coming through there, and you know, because you really do have to swing it. Uh, you know, you stay outside, uh, and then to get back in line for for uh, you know the left hook there in turn four. But uh, it, it, it has got to be one of the most difficult things out there right now uh, to be out there driving and the stuff, especially in an open you know in an open cockpit car. So I want to uh, want to welcome a couple folks to the uh, the chat right now. Uh, maybe trying to get a little reconnaissance on, on what's going to be necessary for their uh, race two qualifying session. Uh, we've got multi-time champion Jim Drago and Spec Miata, Preston Partis, uh, multi-time champion. Uh, Preston says, it looks wet. <laughs> now, it, well, that's because he only stands four foot one, so it's wet oh, where he is. Gosh. So, you know, he, gosh. so you're right, Jim. We do need to bring a life jacket out there. <laughs> yes. Actually, a lot of Spec Miata drivers in the uh, in the chat. We've got, uh, of course, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Spec Miata man drama himself there, John Davidson. But we've got Skip Brock Jr. We've got Rowan Gill. Rowan Gill. Okay, I'm even more sad now seeing that the weather that he's not here is. Uh, it sounds like he wanted to race uh, in the wet. And uh, so you know, again, the Spec Miata drivers they're in a, a kind of a, 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 a a special situation compared to all the, the eight other race groups is that their qualifying session this afternoon is going to be specifically for the Sunday feature race, the uh, the 14 lap or 30, uh, 35 minute race. And uh, so wet or dry, uh, they uh, they certainly will be looking to come out here. And, uh, and again, big difference uh, between now and when Spec Miata went out for qualifying for race for their first race is that uh, it had started raining while they were on the grid. We had some drivers 
uh, head back to the paddock before ever taking to the racetrack to put on wet tires. We had some other drivers uh, would turn their outlap, come down the pit lane, and had crew waiting for them on the pit lane to put the wet weather tires on. Yeah, you know, so it was kind of that mixed bag, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, Greg, the ones that didn't, get, you know, come in and put them on, they ended up, you know, we went to a black flag all, and they, some of them really didn't get a good lap, right? No. So, you know, you, you, you for, for Saturday, looks like we got another car off on uh, right near pit in, just past hog pin there. Mm -hmm. And on the left, and that may be David Adorno. That this may time. be David Adorno right there. So, right. you know, he didn't want to leave his teammate out there all by himself. So, all right. So, uh, well, we'll see see how long it takes to get him out there. As we've got five minutes remaining in the session, we just had Russell Strait head back to the paddock. So, uh, driver uh, looks like the the forty seven uh, QRE Formula six hundred is now done. And Brian looks like we are going to be uh, bringing out the checkered flag five minutes early because it doesn't look like Mister Adorno. Well, he's well, actually he's, somebody's he's, moving down. Yeah, there. He's starting to move now. Uh, hopefully, he can get back on track. But the word has uh, been made to uh, to display the checkered flag at the starter stand. So let's do this. Let's make a final call to the grid. Uh, we'll go and uh, run down the finishing order here, uh, and then we'll take a little break. Attention in the paddock. Attention in the paddock. Final call to the grid for race group number three. That's touring two, touring three, and touring four. If you could please head to the grid. This is your final call. Race group number three. Please start heading to the grid. All right, so, Brian, let's take a quick a uh, quick break. We'll set up. We'll get ready for our next group. As you heard, touring cars, closed to closed top cars, tin top cars uh, for qualifying here at Virginia International Raceway, where you are watching the 2023 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. And we'll be right back. For over 25 years, championship winning drivers and teams have demanded Hawk Performance Motorsports brake pads. Now you can have their advanced technology on your daily car, truck, or SUV with Hawk Performance Street products. With the improved HP Plus pad for that hybrid street and track feel, or Super Duty pads for tow vehicles, their all new ER1 brake pad designed to take on even the longest race, and their all new high performance brake fluid, Hawk has all of your braking needs covered. Visit hawkperformance.com and like them on Facebook or Instagram to learn more about the Hawk Performance Advantage. Hawk Performance, what's stopping you? Tire Rack was established over 40 years ago by an SECA member with a passion to find the right tires, wheels, brakes, and suspension products for racers and enthusiasts both on the street and on the track. As official tire retailer of Sports Car Club of America since 1995 and sponsor of the Runoffs Pole Award, Along with the National Solo Program, Time Trials Nationals and National Tour, and Track Night in America, Tyrac is proud to support the SCCA and its members as they go have fun with cars. For more than 100 years, Sunoco, SCCA's official fuel partner since 2001, has been fueling victories both on and off the track, which is why Sunoco has trusted to fuel over 50 series of racing, driving, and winning, including the SCCA National Championship runoffs, SCCA Pro Racing, Trans Am, NHRA, and NASCAR. To find race gas near you, visit SunocoRaceFuels.com or call Sunoco at 800-RACE-GAS. Shop anytime, anywhere with the Summit Racing app. Mazza Vineyards is the exclusive sparkling wine for podium celebrations at the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour, SCCA Runoffs, and Tire Rack SCCA Pro Solo. Celebrate your racing weekend with Mazza Vineyards and learn more at enjoymazza.com.
And welcome back to Virginia International Raceway for the 2023 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour or Soaking Tour, something along those lines. I'm Greg Ginsberg along with Brian Donati. And Brian, our next group up, Touring 2, Touring 3, and Touring 4, some of our tin tops. And uh, headlights on for safety. They're rolling off the grid <laughs> right now. Thank, thank God for those uh, daytime running lights uh, <laughs> that most of them are, still have to run. Uh, let's quickly take a look and see where we stood after uh, the morning's qualifying session. Then we'll uh, try and track down and uh, see how many drivers have gone out for this very damp session. Uh, fastest driver on track this morning, again, in the dry. Mark Bowden out of Buffalo Grove, Illinois, in his uh, Fall Line Motorsports Porsche, ran a 202.4. Scotty B. White out of Auburn, Washington, in his uh, Dodge Viper, second fastest at a 203 flat, and uh, third fastest in T2, Aaron Kaplan uh, out, of, uh, out of Chicago, Illinois, in his BMW M3, a uh, 205.333. In T3, fastest driver on track this morning with a qualifying time of 206 flat, coming off uh, two wins at Summer Point Raceway last week, representing Tech Sport and Hoosier in his Nissan 370C. It's Robbie Hines, uh, second fastest. Shay Che out of, I uh, believe he's representing the Susquehanna region uh, out of Pennsylvania, and uh, he turned in a 208.345, and uh, I believe that is in a Toyota GR86 uh, that uh, is also under the Tech Sport banner and a car that he has run in SRO World Challenge. Uh, I believe uh, Richard Baldwin in uh, the Nissan 350Z, the Hoosier G-Lock brakes machine, uh, was your third fastest driver, 208.460. So uh, about uh, 1.2 seconds separating our top three in T3. And then finally in T4, this is great to see. And she had a great runoffs here uh, back, in, uh, uh, back in the fall. <laughs> back in the fall. Angelica Spray uh, in, in her Subaru BRZ. She ran a time of 212.485. Chris Windsor in his Mazda RX, uh, pardon me, his Mazda MX-5. He's out of Thurmont, Maryland. And uh, Chris turned in a 212.924. And Charles habis Rutinger uh, came home with the third fastest time. He's out of Spartanburg, South Carolina, uh, representing Habis Performance and the Central uh, Carolina region, a 213.453. So, so, Greg, I think we got 43, 43 cars went out this morning, and right now I'm only seeing 16 have gone out. So, again, a lot of people are going to set their, um, you know, set their time from early this morning. Again, this is another group that was damp when they went out. It's just pouring. It looks like we're going to get some side by side actually coming out of, kind of out of the oak tree there. But I think that at some point you may want to just, you know, kind of stay tucked in single file. I know the spray can get to be a, you know, get to be a problem. Get to see, and you're you're a little bit faster coming off of there, but. Uh, you may want to uh, kind of spread yourselves out there. Again, this is still qualifying. We're not racing. And so you want to make sure that you stay on the racing line itself. Um, because, again, we've had cars going on. And if you look out here, I'm looking out the window here at the front stretch, you can see where the racing line actually really is, um, where they come. And anywhere, everywhere on either other side is, you know, that's where it's really starting to pop it up. So. All right. And uh, real quick, uh, Jose Miguel. Uh, asking where he can get the schedule. And rather than me being, you know, totally difficult, Brian, and, and saying, well, go to the SCCA website, I'm going to put the exact URL uh, here in the chat if he, uh, if Jose wants to go and pull it up. But uh, he can also go to scca.com front slash super tour. And uh, if he then clicks on the link for Virginia International Raceway, there's a link there for the schedule. There's also a link for all of the drivers as well, so you can find out exactly uh, who is running. As uh, we've got drivers now starting, uh, starting their first flying lap, or actually completing their first flying laps uh, here. Uh, we talked about Angelica Spray, who's out in her Subaru. Uh, we've got uh, her husband Ryan. Uh, in his T3 Ford Mustang running as well. And this is one of the EcoBoost Mustangs, and it actually sounds kind of okay. And uh, Ryan ran at the runoffs as well. They're both out of Little Elm, Texas. Uh, and uh, Ryan uh, put in a pretty good showing in qualifying. I don't think he had the race uh, that he wanted, but uh, uh, we take a look here. He was fifth fastest this morning in Touring 3. Uh, I would I would be very surprised if he did not improve, uh, or probably if he did not improve upon the 208 that he ran earlier today, given the wet conditions. 
Yeah, no, I, it's going to be a little hard to uh, give me hard to improve. I think again, this is another se another class, you know, that's going out here. That's really, you know, you're not going to improve your time. Again, we talked about it early. You know, 43 cars going out. We really only have 18 uh, on track right now. <clears throat> so again, you know, they're going to stick to that. But again, another session that you want to go out and learn because I think this, you know, this group as well. If we look, you know, tomorrow, uh, you know, kind of going out and that's you right now the 11.40 time frame, it's going to be wet again, right? If not, it's going to be damp. Now, I know our, you know, our, our precipitation percentages go way down uh, tomorrow than they are now. I, they can't get any worse out here now, right? Right. So, um, you know, so I think, again, going through, making sure everything's okay, getting the rain tires in, um, you know, to get... Uh, you get your car going through. So right now it's just a matter of getting some laps in and getting getting what you need to do to prepare yourself for a rain race tomorrow, um, you know, ar around the new time frame. Yeah, as a matter of fact, one of those drivers who I think is out specifically to try and get uh, get some more information about the car, Chris mm -hmm. Dean, uh, driver of the, uh, the number 85 uh, Scion FRS, that is one of our T4 entries. Chris, for many years, ran a, uh, a Nissan Sentra SER here in the Southeast Division. Uh, in ITA, and uh, after I think probably about 15 years of ownership, sold the car off. He's now moved over to touring. Had some issues in qualifying with that brand new car to him, and uh, was only able to manage 15th in T4. He's out there right now, uh, trying to uh, trying to see how it's going to do right now. Uh, he is 11th fastest overall and third fastest in T4, and uh, you know again, kind of hard to compare times from this morning uh, to now. But he is running quite well. Uh, Matt Milford in his uh, number 131 Honda Civic, I think that's a 2008 Honda Civic. Uh, he's from New Bern, North Carolina. He's currently running fourth fastest. Also, both of those drivers a lot of seat time here at the IR. Yeah. Yeah, I think as these guys, you know, as these drivers get going again, again, some of these cars weigh obviously more than our, you know, our other classes here, and so I think that, you know, with these touring cars, uh, I think you're going to see some, uh, you know, again, we're we're down in the 240s. That's really kind of, you know, I, I know that's nowhere near where we were, but you talked about it. Ryan Spray is, is up, and, and right now he's got the fastest time in that Ford Mustang. So, yeah, he's up in the. He's got the 244.1 currently in his T3 Ford Mustang. And right now, uh, top three fastest cars all in T3. Uh, Spray in the Mustang. Sean Lovett in his uh, spec E46 BMW. And he's all the way here, all the way out in Petaluma, California. Uh, I'm sure probably trying to escape the rain at, at Butlow. <laughs> so and the, now we know who to bring. Yeah. We know who to blame because he's the one who brought it because they've been getting doused for, you know, for really the, since January with rain out there. Exactly. Then Colin Harrison, third fastest in his Toyota 86. Hey, Brian, real quick, we're about, uh, about seven and a half minutes into this qualifying session. Let me make a call to the grid sure. for our next group. Attention in the paddock, attention in the paddock. First call to the grid for race group number four. That's Formula Atlantic, Formula Continental, and Formula X. If you could please start making your way to the grid. Race group number four, Formula Atlantic, Formula Continental, and Formula X. If you could please head to the grid. And uh, Brian, I just saw, uh, I was just talking about Matt Milford and his Honda Civic. Just saw him coming down the pit lane. I think he's taking the car. Uh, back to the uh, the pits and uh, not a uh, not a tr uh, terribly strong session for Matt. Uh, 16th fastest out of the 18 drivers here uh, in the session. Yeah, I, I, again, I, I think it's just going through the motions here to try to get you know get your car get get used to driving in the rain. I mean, obviously, we don't want to race. You know, in this type of weather, uh, rain racing is uh, sometimes fun. Um, this is a little bit challenging as we, uh, you know, if you look going down the back stretch, and again, we're going to go too wide up to the top of the hill here, down to the back stretch, going down into the uh, roller coaster. That's going to be fun. So somebody, somebody will probably give way there, hopefully, and they don't go in there too wide. We've seen it even in the dry, too wide doesn't work, let alone in a in a downpour. So. Um, you know, again, uh, Sean Lovett in that 23 and that BMW spec E46, he just went to 238.6. So, again, we're starting to see, you know, if you're staying on line and you're running the regular race line, it, it is it, it not by dry by any means. I don't want to give the false thing. We got one car off here at uh, down at the end of Hogpen right before pit out or pit in, I should say. 
Um, trying to get through there again. I'm hoping he's kicking in that four-wheel drive. It does look like one of the BMWs there, as you can see. Um, I know that may not be one of the BMWs. Uh, it's kind of hard to see right now, but it, you know, at no. some point you got to get back on that asphalt. Yeah, it's, 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 an like, e 40, it's, yeah, it's an E46. It's an E46. So and it's, uh, that is the one. I think that is. That may the be the one. That may be Aaron Kaplan right yeah, there. Yeah, I was going to say it's either Aaron Kaplan or it might be the 114 of Todd Clark. Uh, we'll see. We'll, uh, He'll we'll come see by here. the window here in a second, but. Uh, yeah, it is. It is. You know, again, as much as it's rained over there, that is not something. That is not a place you want to be. But you know, you come down through there, and we've got some more, kind of going through there, nice and slow, and letting cars going through. So that was the 19. 19. Uh, so that is uh, uh, Francis, Francis Seldorf. Seldorf, yeah. So, um, yeah, like I said, you know. It, it, Look, you run the regular line. I think you're going to have even a little bit more grip than you would elsewhere, uh, you know, with those rain tires. Again, that is the line that gets run the most. Uh, but I think that's where, if there is any grip out here at all, and again, we're in the 40s uh, temperature-wise, if there is any grip at all, that's really where it's going to be. There is no grip anywhere else. All right, and Brian, just uh, wanted to uh, to uh, let all of our viewers at home know uh, that uh, today's schedule, we are uh, scheduled as, uh, looks like we've got another car that's gone off going through Snake uh, right now, and I think one of our BMWs, uh, but uh, the way the schedule is laid out today, uh, we've got, uh, again, our, uh, our Formula Atlantic and Continentals and Formula X cars, race group number four, and then we're going to wrap up the day uh, with that Spec Miata qualifying session for race number two. So hopefully Jim Drago and Preston Partis and Nick Bruni and, and the, all of the E Street Racing folks and maybe even Skip Rock Jr. from OPM Autosports, hopefully they will find their ways back to the cars to go out for qualifying because that qualifying session is going to be solely for our Sunday feature race. Uh, but uh, that is going to be the schedule today, tomorrow morning. We're going to have cars on course, and we're going to go live about 8 a.m. tomorrow. We are going to wrap up qualifying. We've got four groups of qualifying before we start those 25-minute sprint races tomorrow. Uh, we anticipate the sprint races will start probably around 10.20 uh, tomorrow morning. Brian Belansky will be rejoining us tomorrow. Brian's going to stick around. We're going to be calling some races, having a good time, and uh, hopefully for us here in the booth staying dry. Uh, but that is the schedule. We've got two more qualifying sessions this afternoon. Tell you what, Greg, as we you know start to wind down this group, and you talk about that spec Miata, there was a lot of drivers in that first qualifying round. And then again, we got another car going off there in the uh, coming down the roller coaster. It looks like one of the Miatas there, I believe. Yeah, it's one of the MX-5s. Oh, kinda... We'll get that number in a moment. I think it is the number six machine. Apparently, and we'll try and get the number of that bus here in just a in just a moment. It is Aiden Rose driving the number six T4 uh, Mazda. He's out of uh, Stottsburg, New York. And it would be almost best if he backed that up instead of trying to pull around that corner because he's going to get stuck. So if he can back up, although he's going to make a liar out of me, but yeah, driving like driving that. uphill is never difficult. That is uh, yeah just past. Uh, the top of the roller coaster over yep, turn 14, and there, and there you go. There he is. Going to back up down there. Just stay out of that tire wall because that ain't going to do you any good either. So gets the signal there from the corner workers, and at this point, just mash it and get on the asphalt as quickly as you can and get through there. Yep, there you go. Okay, good. All right, Brian, let's do this. Let me make a uh, another call to the grid, and then we are going to take a break. Thanks to our partners and sponsors. So let's do this first. God forget, I forget to hit those tones. Attention in the paddock, attention in the paddock. Second call to the grid for Formula Atlantic, Formula Continental, and Formula X. Please start heading to the grid. Formula Atlanta, Atlanta? Formula Atlantic, Formula Continental, and Formula X, if you can please start heading to the grid. And so let's take that break. We're going to thank some of our partners and sponsors. And when we come back, more qualifying action here from Virginia International Raceway, where you're watching the 2023 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. Hoosier Racing Tire is proud to be the presenting sponsor of SECA's Super Tour. Hoosier's mission is to be the dominant, customer-driven provider of tires to race teams domestically and internationally. Realizing Hoosier's existence and continued success is dependent upon how well we meet our customers' expectations by providing the safest, most reliable, high-quality race tires that put you in the winner's circle. For more information, see one of our trackside support personnel 
or the local Hoosier Tire racing dealer nearest you, or contact us at HoosierTire.com. Hoosier Racing Tires, truly designed for champions. Mazza Vineyards is the exclusive sparkling wine for podium celebrations at the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour, SCCA Runoffs, and Tire Rack SCCA Pro Solo. Celebrate your racing weekend with Mazza Vineyards and learn more at enjoymazza.com. Tire Rack was established over 40 years ago by an SCCA member with a passion to find the right tires, wheels, brakes, and suspension products for racers and enthusiasts both on the street and on the track. As official tire retailer of Sports Car Club of America since 1995 and sponsor of the Runoffs Pole Award, along with the National Solar Program, Time Trials Nationals and National Tour, and Track Night in America, Tire Rack is proud to support the SCCA and its members as they go have fun with cars. For more than 100 years, Sunoco, SCCA's official fuel partner since 2001, has been fueling victories both on and off the track, which is why Sunoco has trusted to fuel over 50 series of racing, driving, and winning, including the SCCA National Championship runoffs, SCCA Pro Racing, Trans Am, NHRA, and NASCAR. To find race gas near you, visit SunocoRaceFuels.com or call Sunoco at 800-RACE-GAS. Ready for a new race trailer? Bravo Trailers is the exclusive trailer partner of the SCCA. Owned by longtime SCCA racers, Bravo Trailers work better, load easier, and tow better because we build them with racers in mind. Visit bravotrailers.com to see your new trailer in aluminum or steel. Want to get out on track but not quite ready to dive into wheel-to-wheel -wheel action you're seeing this weekend? Check out, check out Track Night in America driven by Tire Rack. The one-day low-pressure fun with your streetcar friends at more than 30 racetracks around the country. It's where you can go as fast as you want, learn from stellar coaches, and leave with a big old smile. Visit tracknightinamerica.com to learn more. So I'm Greg Ginsberg along with Brian Donati and uh, this is the 2023 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour day number one qualifying day, part of the qualifying here for the Super Tour, Brian. And uh, we are uh, deep in the middle of uh, our touring car session, T2, T3, and T4. And, you know, we were following uh, the number six car, Aiden Rose, as he had uh, had his off up at the roller coaster. He immediately brings the car down the pit lane, and uh, I don't know if it was hyperventilation or maybe the <laughs> or maybe the reason he went around is because he couldn't see out the windshield. But he had his crew guy there, not wiping down the outside of the windshield, wiping down the inside. Floor. I think it was actually one of the workers wiping off the inside of the car. But you know what? You, you know these guys have to you know defrogger, uh, defroggers, defrosters in there, and they probably turn, he probably didn't turn it on. You know, uh, you know, as he started to come down. But you're right; it, it could have been a product of that. Could be the reason why he spun, right? Couldn't yeah. see it, fogged up quicker than he anticipated, and uh, you know, it is getting a little lighter out here. Still yeah. raining; hasn't changed. So I, I might add that 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 he might need a defrogger here uh, yeah, well. <laughs> this weekend. But uh, all right, let's take a quick uh, look at the order as it stands here. And uh, only a single T2 car went out for uh, this qualifying session. That was Aaron Kaplan uh, in his uh, BMW. M2 Club Sport. He's out of Evanston, Illinois. He ran a 242-507. He put in five laps, and I believe he may still be out on track. Um, let's take a look at T4, uh, where Christian Braunlich in his Mazda RX-8, he's out of Fort Mill, a lot of track time here at Virginia International Raceway. He's currently your fastest driver on track, almost five seconds up on the rest of the T4 field, a 244-540. Aiden Rose, who we just yep. talked about, second fastest, at a 248-215. Angelica Spray, who was our fastest driver in the dry and still has the provisional pole time in T4, uh, a 249-483 with Owen Sheffer, uh, who finished, I believe, fifth at the runoffs here in 2019 in T4 in his Mazda RX-8. Uh, he, uh, he is now jumped up to second fastest in the wet, and I, I raced against Owen in ITA for years upon years. Uh, he put, just put down a 247.515. That's still three seconds off of Braunlich's times. And in T3, Sean Lovett has the fastest lap time of the session uh, in his spec E46 at 238.63. And uh, that is uh, about, uh, just uh, about, uh, what, about, uh, about a quarter of a second faster than Ryan Spray yeah. uh, in the uh, the EcoBoost Mustang at a 239 flat. Colin Harrison in his Toyota 86, he's out of uh, Kirtland, Ohio, is third fastest. 
Yeah, these guys starting to wind down again. They're trying to get their, uh, you know, trying to get the best. Again, I think we've still got a few cars out on track, like you know, like you were just talking about. You know, 192, Randy Johnson there in that Ford Mustang from Tacoma, Washington, just went by the start finish line there. So completing another lap, he's actually done. Uh, let's see, he's actually done six laps, so he's kind of running full. Um, and again, these guys will go out and try to run a full simulated. Uh, a run to try to get better, uh, you know, results out of that. Not really worried about the uh, qualifying, but trying to, uh, you know, get the race stuff in. All uh, right. So uh, let's take a look here as uh, we now have just about five minutes on the clock. And uh, we have a driver off in the grass. Uh, Brian, this, uh, this has been uh, kind of a uh, recurring theme here that with five minutes remaining in a qualifying session, we have a car go off at hog pen and end up all the way out in the grass. Uh, we'll uh, see if he can make his way out. That is the 194 machine, and uh, that is Ryan Spray, uh, currently se uh, second fastest in T3, and uh, he started to move forward. We'll see here in a moment if that is going to bring out another uh, another early checkered flag. But Brian, let's do this. Let's uh, let's make a final call to the grid for our next group, in, in case it does. Attention in the paddock, final call to the grid for race group number four, Formula Atlantic, Formula Continental, and Formula X, please head to the grid. For race group four, Formula Atlantic, Formula Continental, and Formula X, please head to the grid. And there you go, you can see it there uh, on our timing tower with a little bit over four minutes remaining. Uh, and uh, it is Sean Lovett, uh, in his uh, Specky 46. Now, Sean only turned in three laps and called it a session. Uh, Ryan Spray is uh, still sitting there out in the grass, and he's he's slowly but surely trying to uh, adjust, uh, uh, adjust the attitude of his car <laughs> to, to find his way back to the track. But he is the second fastest time in T3s, uh, about 45 hundredths of a second off of Lovett's times. Colin Harrison another seven tenths back from there in his Toyota 86 and uh, then Todd Clark in a BMW 330 CI Todd uh, with a uh, a 249 almost 10 seconds off of our top three as Owen Sheffer in his T4 uh, Mazda RX-8 who we talked about a moment ago he's going to take his car back to the pits uh, after turning the second fastest T4 time uh, just about three seconds off of Christian Braunwich Aiden Rose now uh, seven tenths off of uh, off of Sheffer's time, and again in T2, only a single T2 driver went out for qualifying. Aaron Kaplan, a 2.42.5. None of these drivers have gotten anywhere near what they ran this morning. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, it looks like our driver there still trying to get out of there. I think he's going faster backwards. He should just back out of there and not try to go forward. Yeah. I think once you once he puts it in first gear there to try to go, it doesn't want to you know doesn't really go anywhere. But if he Leaves it in reverse. He's got a ton of grip. <laughs> he's probably that's, got more grip. Maybe that's what you need to go around here fast. It, well, it, it's like driving a front-wheel drive car. <laughs> well, you know, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe you just stick it in reverse and go around the track. Probably be two minutes flat. Look, see, you got plenty of grip coming out of the. Well, well coming out we're, of a reverse. I, I would say we're we're running on three minutes that he's been trying to extricate himself. Yeah, he gets to a spot and then, you know, goes to, I think he's trying to find the dry spot, not to make fun of him, but he's trying to find the dry spot, well, well, which, will not, uh, which will not happen. All right, and well, we just got you know, the 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 folks over at uh, the turn 17 flag stand have been have been talking. They said, well, you know, we, uh, it looks like uh, it looks like uh, spray is uh, called it in, and uh, we should send somebody out to get him now. Yeah. But uh, all of a sudden, as, <laughs> oh, so, as oh, soon as they keyed the radio, that. there he goes, Ryan Spray, <laughs> with very little with very little spray, I might add, gets his car back <laughs> out on track. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the 194 machine is back underway. Now he has to do the lap just to get the uh, the mud off the underneath the car. You don't want to be. Oh my! All right. So we've got uh, about what are we looking at? About a minute and a half remaining here in qualifying. And most of our drivers, uh, Brian, have uh, have finished their last laps. I think we've got one driver now. Uh, coming down the, we've got one driver coming down the roller coaster. 
We've got the one driver heading into, uh, two drivers heading into Oak Tree. And then a little bit further back on course, we've got, of course, uh, the green Mustang of Ryan Spray. That's uh, one of our Mustangs there uh, coming down the, the, the back straight. I think Angelica just went by the, uh, just came out of Oak Tree. So it looks like we still got some several cars that are going up there, uh, coming through out of Oak Tree down the back stretch. So until those guys come, I think this one should be Ryan that's Spray. Right, yeah, that's Ryan Spray one. there. Yeah. Nope, that's actually BMW, so that's oh, not him. So well, maybe not. He's still up there somewhere. Here comes one of the Mustangs, like I said, and then I believe the second one down off the uh, roller coaster there is in Jonathan's play, I believe. Let's take a look at that, but uh, I think they should be completing their last lap here. And checkered flag is now being displayed. Simon Foulweather just came down the pit lane, so uh, yeah. he called off his last flying lap, the, uh, the BMW 330Ci out of uh, Birmingham. And uh, again, the checkered flag now being displayed on the field. So we have a few more cars. Uh, the uh, 192 machine, the 192 Ford Mustang of Randy Johnson, uh, one of our touring three drivers crosses the stripe, sets his fastest lap of the session on the last lap. Good enough for sixth fastest in class this session uh, at a three minute point six. And that BMW, that trailing BMW, decided to call things off on the pit lane. And I believe, let's see here, that was, who were we checking? That was one of our M2 Club Sport machines. I believe that was the number 18 machine. of Aaron Kaplan. Yeah, it looks like when you just talked about Randy Johnson, it looks like Randy Johnson and Angelica Spray, they ran the most laps in this this session here of eight. So again, teams trying to run a full simulated kind of race in the rain and kind of get, uh, you know, you can work on setups, right? You're not going to get any faster, yeah. right? We, we, I think we've kind of mentioned that uh, quite a bit. So you put a rain setup on it, you run out there and you run your race rain setup because, uh, you know, pretty much guaranteed they're going to run into the, uh, they're going to run into rain tomorrow. So at some point, or the track is really going to be wet. And, yeah. you know, the line could be, you know, dried out by the time these guys get out there. That but, you know, you'll have some rain, so you're going to want to run, run on rain tires. So they'll have to, uh, you know, you want to you get that set up right. Yeah, definitely. All right. So uh, real quick here, I'm uh, going to put up before we take a break, you can see uh, exactly what the uh, the weather looks like here in Alton, Virginia, just outside of Danville at Virginia International Raceway. And, you know, earlier, Brian, when, when we were watching the, uh, the patterns uh, early on, there were, there, was a, there were two fine patterns. There was a pattern uh, to the, uh, the northwest of the track. There was a pattern <laughs> to the southeast <laughs> of the track. And they were just kind of flowing along on either side. And now you can see it's just one large blob. Yeah, one, one big blob uh, consuming us here at Virginia International Raceway. But tell you what, we're going to be back here in just a few moments. We're going to take another break. And uh, next group on track is going to be our uh, second of, uh, well, it's going to be our last open wheel session of the day it's our second of three over the course of the entire event it's going to be the the fast ones here in the open wheels uh formula atlantic and formula continental we may have some formula x uh competitors as well but uh we're going to take that quick break and you are watching the 2023 hoosier race entire scca super tour live from virginia international raceway and we will be right back
And welcome back to a soggy Virginia International Raceway for the 2023 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. <laughs> joining me today, I'm Greg Ginsburg, by the way. Joining me today, Brian Donati. And we'll have Brian Bolanski in the booth tomorrow for when we go racing. Brian's going to be my guest, I think, uh, tomorrow morning for the remainder of qualifying. And we'll have him sitting in on a number of races as well this weekend, Brian. And uh, hopefully... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we'll we'll see more than just cars going off at Hog Pen this weekend. <laughs> I think so. I think by the time we get to the end of the weekend, I think you know the racing is going to be fantastic, whether it's in the rain or not. I, you know, we always have great races here, no matter whether it's in the rain or in the dry. I think that uh, you know if you're just tuning in here and we're getting ready to come to you for the second qualifying of uh, Spec Miata after this, our Formula Atlantic, Formula Continental, and our Formula X. Um, Again, I think four or five cars may have gone out. Uh, looks like four right four. now, but uh, you know, which was more than I thought they would. Uh, but again, it goes back to what I talked about, right? You, you, they're going to be in the rain tomorrow. We all know it's going to be rain. It's going to be damp. Um, you got to work on the setup. There, yeah. there is two different setups, even to these open wheel cars. You just can't run the same as you would in a dry, yeah. um, you know, car. So you, you've got to make sure that you get, you know, get what you want. We saw in the last group break. Uh, two drivers, they ran full eight laps. Yeah. So they ran the full 20-some minutes uh, that we had. I expect to see pretty much close to the same thing here, uh, especially out of Chip Romer, just to get that wet setup uh, that he's going to need. Well, funny you should mention, because uh, Chip Romer just had some issues uh, with that setup, coming through turns <laughs> one and two on the outlap. He, uh, he put the car off into the mud managed to get it back up on track which over turn one is is quite difficult because uh the the grass just drops right off at the very edge of the pavement there and literally it will go downhill uh if you if you go off the track surface being able to get enough grip to work your way back up the hill is sometimes very challenging it, it's very difficult to get it back up there or even when it's dry right. and it hasn't yeah. rained in a month right so i mean it just you know it depends um but you're right and i think that uh you know, like I said, I, I think these guys out here in these, uh, you know, Chip Romer, I think, uh, you know, uh, let's see who else is out there. Kevin Van Dozy, uh, you know, Robert Weir. I think you're going to see those guys run as many laps as they probably can. I would think in minimum five laps uh, just to try to figure out that wet, uh, that wet set up here for qualifying. All right. So as we've got green flag, we're going to run down. Uh, run down uh, the, how these uh, cars finished up their morning qualifying session. There was a quick question uh, in, uh, uh, in the chat, Brian, from uh, Exceve Motorsports uh, about the schedule. Uh, and, and our big board group had, I believe they only got one flying lap in uh, before the session was red flagged. So either, if that, uh, and so weren't any times coming out of the first qualifying session. Uh, yes, they will have their second qualifying session tomorrow, but they were already scheduled to have their second qualifying session. Uh, tomorrow morning's schedule, uh, we have cars on course at 8 a.m. And we will have uh, four groups of qualifying. Uh, we are going to start off the day with race group number six, which is our big board group. They were scheduled to be first session on course tomorrow morning as we're going to a black flag on track, Brian. We'll, we'll get some information on that in just a moment. So big board uh, will be our first 25-minute qualifying session of the day. Then Spec Racer 4 Gen 3, they will have their second qualifying session of the weekend. Uh, then STL and STU, Super Touring Light and Super Touring Under, that's our race group number eight. And then uh, finally Formula Enterprises 2 and then our prototype cars, uh, they will have the last qualifying session of the day. We have nine race groups all together. And then we uh, anticipate our first race of the weekend being somewhere around 10.20 uh, tomorrow morning, and we will start things off with small bore with our production car classes, GT Lite and V-Spec. And so we are now under black flag conditions uh, here as we did have a car uh, go off. And uh, trying to get the number on that, uh, on that car right now, we'll likely be able to see it as they come down the pit lane. We'll see who's missing. Uh, but uh, this morning in qualifying, Brian, we did have 10 drivers uh, go out on uh, go out set times in Formula Atlantic. We had three drivers in Formula Continental. We had seven. Uh, fastest driver on track this morning was Chip Romer uh, in his uh, Formula Atlantic Swift. 
Uh, he put in a time of 142.807. That was about nine, about nine seconds faster than the rest of the field. Uh, Jim Booth was our second fastest Atlantic. Uh, was our second fastest Atlantic at a 153.8, and then we had Carl Lennox Bar Brew at a 202. In Formula Continental, it was Tim Miner who came off uh, double wins at some point last week uh, with a 151.57. Robert Allaire, our uh, second fastest driver, and uh, his, uh, of course, his son taking a national championship last year. Uh, Robert, second fastest at a 152.4, so about nine tenths off of Miner's times. Michael Verison's multi time national champion in Formula V. Third fastest here yesterday, uh, probably this morning at a 152.5, uh, so about a tenth off of a layer. Uh, so the driver that is uh, taking the long way around. <laughs> We'll see here. I believe it's actually Robert Allaire in the number 52 machine has decided to take an extra extra lap, and uh, it was very good because it, it's his fastest lap of the session. Brian didn't <laughs> didn't, didn't want to. Uh, might, there might have been a black flag, but he didn't he didn't want to call off that flyer. So uh, we'll see. I have a feeling that that uh, that that lap is probably going to be uh, uh, knocked. So we had five drivers go out and set uh, uh, and uh, head out for qualifying. Uh, we know that the the problem, well, the, the problem child by being off track is not the five two car, uh, Robert Allaire. Uh, let's we'll, we'll try and get the number on uh, on that machine in just a few moments. We have uh, Chris Sharno on track, Robert Allaire, Kevin Fandozzi, and Mauro Faza in Formula Continental. Chip Romer, our sole Atlantic on track. So far, right now on the pit lane, I only see Chip Romer down there, so I'm not seeing anybody else. So he's the first one to come in. Um, and I know that you spoke about you know him having an issue uh, early on uh, down in turn one, but I'm not seeing any other cars on the racetrack other than the Robert Allaire machine. So you've got Fandozzi and and uh, uh, who's the other one there that I'm missing? Uh, uh, a 55 machine. I know that he went out. Uh, he yeah, went, he went out, but he has not come back either. And I think that coming out of uh, Coming out of uh, Oak Tree now, heading down to Back Street, I think that is the Allaire machine. So we're yeah. missing two. Uh, I have not seen the four of Kevin Fandozzi. Kevin Fandozzi, yeah, uh, exactly, the number four machine. Hey, real quick, Brian, let me uh, make a first call to the, especially while we got a little bit of downtime here, let me make a call to the grid uh, to keep Mike Collins happy. I mean, to uh, to get our last group <laughs> up to uh, up to the grid and ready for qualifying. Attention in the paddock. First call to the grid for race group number five. That is Spec Miata. If you can please start heading to the grid. Race group number five, Spec Miata. Please start heading to the grid. All right. So uh, here again, we are under black flag conditions here at Virginia International Raceway in the 2023 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. Looks like that uh, number 52 machine of Robert Allaire coming down the roller coaster. Now he'll be heading into the, the pits. Uh, perhaps a little uh, disbelief from the uh, the flaggers over at Hog 10. There is Mr. Allaire uh, coming on in. So two of our cars are still out there missing somewhere. Um, again, one of them is Kevin Fandozzi and the 55 of uh, Mara Faza. Well, we've got, uh, looking, we've got, I think, two cars uh, a little bit further down the pit lane, I think, getting okay. uh, maybe not getting tires, but they've got crew. <laughs> They're getting taking su a look at super tires. wets. Yes. They're getting the super wets. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And and hasn't uh, Mike Collins been up since 2.30 this morning? I'm not sure why he's so worried about... You know, no, that that was that was last week, Brian, where uh, uh, where where he he checked in early for the uh, the Spec Miata race at uh, yeah. Summit Point Raceway, that he was up, I think, at about three thirty in the morning California yeah. time. <laughs> Thought he was up early this morning, or he just perhaps, hasn't been to bed since last week. Perhaps but, blue ribbon in hand. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so that explains where the other two are. I mean, I know, like I said, you got Romer sitting down here, and uh, you've got uh, the other two up there putting on. Uh, Putting on super wets. That's uh, right. If there is such a thing, I don't believe there is I, I, super I, wets, but I know that's what I'd be. I'd be looking for studs. Stud, yeah, exactly. Studded uh, tires. Like for well, depending on if they go off track, they might need them. Uh, hey, want to do a to thank Jose Miguel. Uh, he says it's a great listen while working, and uh, I'll, I'll do this for the very first time today. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say it as if I were Brian Bolanski. If you guys like what you're hearing today, and believe me, and we've got another driver as you just saw there uh, making uh, his way. 
around. Looks like they got him underway over at turn one. If you like what you're hearing, and, and yeah, you can imagine that uh, it's got to be a little difficult up here at the booth for us, given the track conditions and given the, uh, the number of drivers that are on course. But please, go ahead, smash that like button. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to the Sports Car Club of America's YouTube channel and click on the notification bell so you can find out uh, every time we go live. So they got that, that car out of turn one, Brian, and uh, in, ooh, they've just given word to the folks on the grid now uh, that they're going to have about one minute and they're going to be sending them out on track here in just a moment. And I believe it's the 55 machine of FAZA uh, right. that we are seeing uh, come around now. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yes, Mike Collins says he hears me, and uh, he says it's lovely in Hunting Be Huntington Beach, Surf City, USA. Uh, and he's got, uh, he's got a PBR in hand. So uh, thanks for joining, Mike. <laughs> so the question becomes now, Faza's still out on the racetrack coming back around. He's just now coming out of Oak Tree. I do believe they just sent Chip Romer back out. That means they're back to green. Unless there is an issue, there's no reason for him to come in. No, no, no reason at all. And uh, other than maybe to have the crew take a look at the well, car. Yeah, that's, yeah. And uh, there is the 24 machine of Charnow. He is heading out. There is Kevin Fandozi in the number four uh, Formula Continental, the white and silver machine. He's heading down the pit lane. And, Brian, I think he was just down. I think at they the, were sitting down there, yep. Yeah, I think he had the, uh, the crew taking a look. As uh, we do have uh, the one final entry and uh, uh, coming down through the roller coaster now. Yep, I think that's, that's the Faza machine. Again, if he doesn't come down on pit road, uh, which the really, I, I believe there really isn't any, no. any need for him at this point, unless just to have the crew, hey, check this out for right. me. I was in a puddle and, you know, I want to make sure that the car is 100% uh, before I go back out there. All right, Brian. Well, as we've got, uh, as we've got our uh, field now on their outlap, uh, once again, after that uh, black flag condition, let's do this. Let's make another call to the grid and then we're going to take another break. Again, yeah, thanks to our partners and sponsors. Attention in the paddock. Second call to the grid for race group number five, Spec Miata. If you could please start heading to the grid now. Race group five, Spec Miata. Your qualifying session for race two is next. Group five, Spec Miata to the grid, please. All right, Brian. So let's take another break here. And uh, when we come back, we'll bring you all the way to uh, the checkered flag in qualifying for our Formula Atlantics and Formula Continentals here at Virginia International Raceway, where you're watching the 2023 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. We will be right back. Haggerty is the official and exclusive insurance partner for the Sports Car Club of America. Haggerty provides affordable off-track insurance protection for motorsports vehicles while in the paddock, in transit, in storage, and at the shop. They provide guaranteed value coverage and even have protection for your trailers. SCCA members can save 5% on insurance through Haggerty. Learn more at Haggerty.com. Haggerty, let's drive together. Tire Rack was established over 40 years ago by an SECA member with a passion to find the right tires, wheels, brakes, and suspension products for racers and enthusiasts both on the street and on the track. As official tire retailer of Sports Car Club of America since 1995 and sponsor of the Runoffs Pole Award, along with the National Solo Program, Time Trials Nationals and National Tour, and Track Night in America, Tire Rack is proud to support the SECA and its members as they go have fun with cars. For over 25 years, championship winning drivers and teams have demanded Hawk Performance Motorsports brake pads. Now you can have their advanced technology on your daily car, truck, or SUV with Hawk Performance Street products. With the improved HP Plus pad for that hybrid street and track feel, or Super Duty pads for tow vehicles, their all new ER1 brake pad designed to take on even the longest race, and their all new high performance brake fluid, Hawk has all of your braking needs covered. Visit hawkperformance.com and like them on Facebook or Instagram to learn more about the Hawk Performance Advantage. Hawk Performance, what's stopping you? Winning takes work. Getting parts is easy. Summitracing.com. 
For more than 100 years, Sunoco, SCCA's official fuel partner since 2001, has been fueling victories both on and off the track, which is why Sunoco has trusted to fuel over 50 series of racing, driving, and winning, including the SCCA National Championship runoffs, SCCA Pro Racing, Trans Am, NHRA, and NASCAR. To find race gas near you, visit SunocoRaceFuels.com or call Sunoco at 800 Race Gas. And we're back here at Virginia International Raceway for the 2023 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. I'm Greg Ginsberg, along with Brian Donati and uh, Brian Bolanski will be joining us tomorrow when we go racing. And uh, wow, you know, I'm looking at this shot, Brian, that we've got uh, coming out of Oak Tree, and I know it's just a big puddle center of track, but for a moment, I, I thought there was actually a big, piece, a giant piece of debris. Something laying in the middle of the track. Yeah, yeah. it's it's got depth. To it. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably not something you're going to want to, you know, you're going to want to hit, especially not in an open wheel car. So I could see, you know, them definitely going wide there and, and hitting. But, you know, again, yeah, again, probably in that scenario. And, you know, we look here at our next shot here coming down the coming down the roller coaster. And you've got, you know, the big puddle to the, you know, to really to the center to driver's left. Um, these guys trying to stay driver or to drivers right. These guys really trying to stay drivers left coming down there, which is the actual, you know, racing line here, right? So these guys really need to stay on that because if not, and I think that's where some of the problems are. If that card starts to wash up just a little bit or gets a little tight and pushes out to to drivers right down there, that's the next thing that you're going to hit. Uh, is that, and I think that's where some of our problems are. Same thing with our uh, our exit out of uh, Hog Pen. You get ready to come down the front stretch. If you tend to tug that in a little bit, and the car gets a little bit loose there, you're right into that big puddle. And I think that's where some of these cars are going off as well. Yeah. So uh, we've got some fast times coming in now. So even after the black flag, it looks like uh, some of these drivers <laughs> coming to grip with. Uh, 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 you know, saying that facetiously, of course, but coming to grip with the uh, the track conditions here today. Uh, Chip Romer, who was our fastest driver in the dry, now our fastest driver in the wet as well, in his uh, Formula Atlantic Swift 0.16, uh, turns in a two. We and a car uh, off somewhere, it looks like maybe there. In the, yeah, this in is the uh, coming coming through yeah. Snake Brian. Yeah, uh, coming out of turn five and uh, impacted the tire wall there. Drivers left, and uh, we'll try and get the car number here. In just a second, I w and uh, unfortunately, the uh, the uh, corner workers there don't have the uh, the car number on it. Then, oh, and that's a maybe not a surprise, but I was just going to say that our fastest Formula Atlantic, uh, Chip Romer, may be the driver over there as uh, we are going to a black flag condition once again with about seven minutes remaining the session, but it sounds like it is uh, the 71. We also have an incident going on up at the top of the uh, roller coaster as well. Oof. And uh, we've... Yeah, we've had a uh, had a driver go off track at the top of the roller coaster as well, and uh, we will uh, try to get uh, we'll try to get the car number on that as well. Uh, Kevin Fandovzi at the moment your fastest Formula Continental driver at a 2.221, Robert Allaire at a 2.22, probably a 2.23 flat. And uh, so, again, we are under black flag conditions. We have two incidents on track out of uh, two, two, uh, two cars uh, involved across out of five total that yeah, were on track. Right, yeah. Well, again, you know, we talked about it, you know, doing the race, you know, the rain set up here. And obviously, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, we talked about Chip, you know, going out early on in the, uh, you know, in turn one, having that incident, second incident, which is very unlike Chip. Right. I mean, it's, yeah. it's just very unlike. So obviously, uh, really trying to stretch the limits of that car and get the most out of it as they can uh, in a rain condition. So uh, that is very unfortunate. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll see who the car is up on top of the roller coaster. Not seeing anything yet. Although you look down the back stretch here and uh, those cars getting ready to roll off here. As it looks like we're going to not only get that checker, but the, you know, the black flag, but we're definitely getting the checker to this session. So it'll give them some time before our uh, next group comes up. All right, looks like uh, we've got uh, Chris Charno coming down the pit lane. And, and you said it, Brian, looks like we are going to uh, once again go to an early checkered flag here uh, with about five minutes left in the session. Kevin Fandozzi uh, brings his uh, brings his. Formula Continental Miguel back behind the wall. 
And uh, Brian, tell you what, uh, let's, I'm going to, again, see if I can get the number of that last car. Based on the number of laps, I'm trying to determine whether or not it's the 55 machine. But let's do this. Uh, while, uh, while we've got our uh, emergency services teams responding to these two different incidents, uh, let's go and uh, we'll take a uh, uh, we'll we'll take a little a little rest here. Uh, you and I will get hydrated and ready for the uh, <laughs> for the challenge that will be Spec Miata, and uh, we'll be back with you here in just a few moments with more action from Virginia International Raceway, where you're watching the 2023 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour, and we will be right back.
And we're back here at Virginia International Raceway for the 2023 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. I'm Greg Ginsberg, along with Brian Donati, joining me in the booth here today for qualifying. Brian's going to be back tomorrow morning. And then Brian Bolanski will be in with us for our racing here starting tomorrow morning at approximately 10.20 a.m. and, of course, all day on Sunday. And now heading out on track, Brian, our very last qualifying session of the day. Uh, it is Spec Miata. And this is a little bit different <laughs> than all of our other qualifying sessions because this qualifying session specifically will set the grid for our Sunday feature race for Spec Miata, um, which, by the way, um, will be uh, rolling off probably around 11.40 a.m. on Sunday. Of course, that is Eastern time. And uh, as we have these drivers heading out, our morning qualifying session for, for Spec Miata, which uh, it had started to rain just as cars were leaving the grid to go onto the track surface and start their, uh, their outlap, uh, it caused a, a lot of strife. We had a number of drivers that took their car back into the paddock and immediately got rain tires. We had drivers who tried to stay out on rains. We had drivers that did an outlap weren't successful and went back to try and get reins. Well, I tell you what, Greg, you talk about the Saturday race from that Q1 where that's going to line up. There are some a really, really good drivers in this field that are going to start from the very far back on Saturday, right? Connor Zilich, a podium driver from uh, Indy. Uh, hey, right? hey, a podium driver from Indy. Just, uh, podium uh well, yeah, at Indy, uh, he just came away with his very first TA2 Trans Am 2 win at Road Atlanta yep. a couple of weeks ago. He's been racing in the, uh, the Global MX-5 Cup as well, and uh, he got caught out. Well, I mean, he's going to start 20th. Stuart McAleer is going to start 30th. Nick Leveroni is going to start 34th. Rob Hines is going to be 37th. Listen to this group that didn't even get a lap in, right? Jim Drago, Peter Inzer, uh, Goulart, right? he's going to start 65th. And Preston Partis is going to start 66th, right? So now we talk about this qualifying session. They got to go out. They got to get a great lap in right now because this is going to help them for Sunday. Right. And then, oh, by the way, you got to go from the 60s to the highest you can for Saturday. Right? That's, yeah, so, so the quali basically qualifying for Saturday, it's done and it's in the books. And some of those drivers, you know, uh, national champions, going to be starting at the tail end of 60-car fields. Uh, Charles McTutis uh, is going to be our provisional, is our, well, not as our, but going to be, but he is our uh, pole sitter uh, for tomorrow's race. Danny Stain is scheduled to start on the outside of the front row. Rafa Abdullali uh, scheduled to start third with Julian DaCosta, Zach Barfield, Ben Meyer, uh, and Logan Stretch starting uh, you know, first through seventh. Um, Nick Bruni, our reigning national champion, scheduled to start eighth. Uh, so on the outside of row number four for tomorrow morning's race. And Spec Miata, their first race uh, is scheduled. This is a 25-minute uh, race. Uh, is scheduled to start about 2 p.m. Uh, tomorrow. And, Brian, I'm getting word that uh, we've got a car off by turn <laughs> three. Uh, over, uh, we showed it being NASCAR Ben, and I think it's out of our camera view, possibly. Uh, but we are going to a black flag all. Uh, that there was a hard impact with the tire wall, and as soon as I get a car number, I'll, I'll let you know there. But uh, we are going to be black flagging the session, and that uh, is going to uh, to create some issues as these drivers try to put in fast times, because when they black flag, the clock keeps running, Brian. Yeah, the clock keeps running, and, and you know, again, all these all these drivers are going to get it from the top of the hill up there. They're going to be asked to pit right away, right? So they're going to have to come in. And, and oh, by the way, you got to take it careful coming in. You know, McTutis and State coming in there pretty quickly. Uh, there is that big puddle there. So again, not one individual lap has been set here, um, you know, within this qualifying. So. Everybody's going to start on the pole. Uh, it looks like we may have one that started to miss it and then pulls in. We'll get a number for that one as it comes in. But uh, I guess when you see uh, 40 cars start to come down pit lane, I think it's probably best that there was a black flag all. So, um, yeah. So if we don't go back, does that mean McTutus is on there? Because he's got a, you know, he's well into the... Uh, yeah, right. Well, right. 106. Well, yeah, yeah, so, so, 
uh, you know, somebody's going to say, I told you so, but uh, somebody somebody sent me a message uh, during the break, uh, after the open wheel group, and uh, uh, we'll call him a prognosticator. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll call him Jimmy, the, I don't want to call him Jimmy the Greek, we'll call him um, uh, Jimmy the Surfer. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy the Surfer. It's like he's been here before. Yeah, it's, it's like, like it, he's seen this before. He says, my guess is nobody scores a lap in Spec Miata before the black flag, and they have to use the morning qualifying for both days. Well, uh, again, we are under black flag conditions. No drivers had completed a flying lap. Uh, and so uh, that's where we are, and uh, we've got, uh, I think, uh, quite a bit of debris on the track as well over by turn three. And uh, we're going to be sending uh, emergency services vehicles there now that we've got the, the field under control. You can see there is a, uh, another vehicle, uh, looks like, just now making his way up through the, uh, the climbing S's. Yeah, it makes it difficult. I mean, it really does make it difficult to, uh, looks like we still got three, three coming down the roller coaster here that really got a late start. But, you know, we're... we're uh, we're bound to get at least one lap in. Yeah, and, uh, and so the, the car that was just going up through the S's uh, was Jim Drago. It was the number two machine, mm -hmm. and I believe that may be the car we're going to see coming out of Oak Tree yep. uh, right that now. Is, yeah, as a matter of fact, there is the green and white number two machine uh, heading down the, uh, down the back straight, and that may be the, the car that had gone off at turn three, Brian. Uh, so... Uh, We'll see what happens. We've got, uh, uh, I wish we had a, a camera shot for you of the pit lane right now because when you have 60-some <laughs> cars here at Virginia International Raceway, what you end up doing is uh, you line them up two by two here and uh, get them ready to roll back off. Yeah, and it looks like that was indeed the number two machine as uh, the emergency services vehicles uh, got to the scene and didn't have a driver there to... <laughs> <laughs> to attend yeah. to, and uh, they just kept going. He drove off, so it, uh, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see when he comes in. Uh, it, it, you know, look, watching him go down the back stretch there, he didn't seem to be having too much damage. I think he went off, but, you know, again, you hit the hit the driver's wall, but, you know, look, and here he comes now on the pit lane. We'll have to take a look at this car, and I would assume that uh, he'll he'll move out of that line as our cars now are rolling off pit road to uh, get back out on track. So, again, obviously not you know, not too much of a repair that needed to be done. And Jim will bring that car down to his crew and they'll take a look at it and probably send him right back out. The problem with that is, is that how long ever it takes to, for this crew to look that car over to make sure it's okay, this field's going to go. He's going to be by himself. Yeah, and so indeed. All right. And so we've got the field now uh, heading back out on track. They are rolling down the pit lane. They are technically, Brian, completing their first flying lap. So uh, <laughs> needless to say, the, uh, the six and a half minute lap that uh, most of these drivers are uh, at best six and a half minutes that these drivers are putting in uh, probably not <laughs> not what they want to base the grid for Sunday's feature race off of yeah I, I mean and, and you know uh, again in, in this instance right now that's probably a blessing I probably if I'm Jim I really want to be by myself yeah. I don't want to be with anybody else or near um, anybody else, especially in the rain. And I think that's kind of the way it's been uh, with every group, although we have seen some drivers trying to make passes and trying to do it. Um, so we'll have to see. There goes Partis off. So, again, he started all the way in the back. Drago's car goes by us now. Other than being dirty, didn't look too bad. Yeah, it didn't look, too bad, didn't look so, so bad. Maybe a little bit of wrinkling on the uh, on the uh, the passenger side rocker panel and, and uh, yeah. door, but it uh, doesn't look too horribly bad. Uh, you know, the, the uh, as you said, probably the best thing for him is that he can probably lay back a little bit and uh, hopefully not come right up onto the back of traffic. I don't know how important using the draft is going to be here in these in these kind of conditions. I would assume going down the back straight and probably still would be uh, a bit of a help as we also now also have the uh, the 24 machine of Alex Acosta uh, leaving the pit lane. Elvin Goulart going out with uh, Nagler. David Nagler in the 67 machine as well. So we just got a report of a car going off track <laughs> at turn one. That was the 156 car. And uh, Hollingshead, and we just had a car go off uh, over by uh, 
uh, just if you take a look at this view, coming out of turn uh, turn 11, the uh, the right hander that leads to the oak tree turn. It is the five seven machine uh, that has now gone off, and we'll try and get the number on that bus. That's Dean Lambros out of Northport, New York. Uh, that uh, he's there in the tire wall. Looks like he may be far off enough. I don't know. It depends. It's going to depend on. Uh, well, I just got word the corner station. They're saying he is stuck. He tried moving and could not get off the wall. And uh, we are going back to a black flag conditions oh. here once again, Brian. So uh, we're going to have some drivers. They're going to be completing some flying laps here. Well, at this point, only three of them got past the start finish line. You know, in order to, to, to take that, you know, official counted lap. Right. There are a bunch that are just now getting the black flag all again at the flag stand. But those laps, I would assume, would not count. So, really, it looks like maybe five uh, before they stop that yeah. uh, going through, right? Yeah. So. so, so right now showing is our fastest driver on course is Raiden Nickel out of uh, Hockton, Georgia with a fast time of a 244-423. Ben Meyer out of Chester, Maryland, a 244-76. Jeremy Fletcher, and look at this, Nick Bruni uh, <laughs> driving the number one machine, current out of Arlington, Virginia, currently fourth fastest driver. Uh, uh, Zach Barfield in the 107, Rafe Abdullahi, uh, who was, uh, again, Abdullahi, uh, is qualified third for tomorrow's uh, sprint race. Uh, and uh, we've seen Abdullahi run at New Jersey Motorsports Park where he is incredibly strong. Uh, this is the first time I've seen him at Virginia International Raceway. William Lambros, Brian Henderson, uh, who in the dry here uh, two years ago on the Super Tour was your pole sitter. Uh, and uh, so he knows the track very well. It was very strong uh, during last year at the runoffs early on in qualifying had provisional pole early in the week. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see how this plays out right now as we are uh, now just about halfway through this qualifying session and uh, under black flag conditions. So, Brian, let's do this. Let's take our leave. final break of the day. Thanks to all of our partners and sponsors. And when we come back, well, hopefully we won't be under black flag conditions when we <laughs> come back, uh, but we'll take you all the way to the checkered flag for our very last qualifying session, our very last session of the day. You are watching qualifying here at Virginia International Raceway for the 2023 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour, and we'll be right back. Ready for a new race trailer? Bravo Trailers is the exclusive trailer partner of the SCCA. Owned by longtime SCCA racers, Bravo Trailers work better, load easier, and tow better because we build them with racers in mind. Visit bravotrailers.com to see your new trailer in aluminum or steel. For over 25 years, championship winning drivers and teams have demanded Hawk Performance Motorsports brake pads. Now you can have their advanced technology on your daily car, truck, or SUV with Hawk Performance Street products. With the improved HP Plus pad for that hybrid street and track feel, or Super Duty pads for tow vehicles, their all new ER1 brake pad designed to take on even the longest race, and their all new high performance brake fluid, Hawk has all of your braking needs covered. Visit hawkperformance.com and like them on Facebook or Instagram to learn more about the Hawk Performance Advantage. Hawk Performance, what's stopping you? Hoosier Racing Tire is proud to be the presenting sponsor of SECA's Super Tour. Hoosier's mission is to be the dominant customer-driven provider of tires to race teams domestically and internationally. Realizing Hoosier's existence and continued success is dependent upon how well we meet our customers' expectations by providing the safest, most reliable, high-quality race tires that put you in the winner's circle. For more information, see one of our trackside support personnel or the local Hoosier Tire racing dealer nearest you, or contact us at HoosierTire.com. Hoosier Racing Tires, truly designed for champions. Mazza Vineyards is the exclusive sparkling wine for podium celebrations at the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour, SCCA Runoffs, and Tire Rack SCCA Pro Solo. Celebrate your racing weekend with Mazza Vineyards and learn more at enjoymazza.com. Summit Racing is proud to support SCCA racers through the Road Racing Contingency Program. Run the required decals to be eligible for contingency payouts. 
And welcome back to Virginia International Raceway for, uh, well, the parking lot. Uh, the 2023 Hoosier Race Attire SCCA Super Tour. I'm Greg Ginsberg, along with Brian Donati joining me here for qualifying. We'll have Brian Bolanski in the booth with us when we go racing a little bit after 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And uh, we are now, Brian, for the second time this session under black flag conditions here in Spec Miata qualifying for their Sunday feature race. Well, you know what, Greg? I, yesterday, getting here and getting set up, I didn't really get a chance to walk around and see everybody like I normally do in the afternoon and kind of talk about, you know, how the car is and everything. You know what? I'm getting some pretty good look at some cars out here because they've been sitting on pit road more than they've actually been on the racetrack. So, yes. you know, it's been... Uh, I, I'm, listen, it's got to be frustrating, right? You you get out there, you know, especially for McTutus and da uh, Danny Stain, yeah. right? And, and it is Danny Stain. Yes. Um, so, you know, you get out there and you're the lead two cars and you really get going. You're kind of trying to work together, even if it is raining, um, to try to figure out what's the best way to, to stay on top, right? To get that Sunday, uh, you know, pole position it's got to be frustrating yeah you know when you have somebody in the back that unfortunately right and and you know it happens but you just can't get that lap and i know that we had a few that were able to get some laps going through but even that was you know a lot slower than i anticipated when we right. went out i think when i first you know before we went on air came back for this group i said look for mctutis and stain to go uh in the you know right around the same time as they did this morning if not maybe in the 30 32 range um because they're going to work together yeah I, I definitely don't see that happening well, with, well, right, you know, eight so, and a half minutes left. No, and so right now, uh, Stain and McTutus, 13th and 14th fastest. Uh, best times for them, 240, uh, a, a low 248 for Stain, a low 249. And, uh, Brian, we are now going to red flag conditions here, which is going to stop the clock. Uh, so uh, the clock with about eight and a half minutes remaining uh, now. Uh, so uh, at least these drivers, I think, as we've realized that they've only gotten two two laps in, um, this will give them the opportunity to get a couple of flying laps in. Uh, but uh, so right now, Stain and McTutis, uh, who are qualified first and second for the Saturday sprint race, currently 13th and 14th. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, uh, you know, we talked about Abdullahi. He's now fallen back into sixth position. Raiden Nickel who had a great race uh, uh, earlier this season, I think down at Sebring in the number 193 machine. Uh, he is your provisional pole sitter at the moment with a 244-42 with Ben Meyer, Jeremy Fletcher, Nick Bruni, your top four. But, you know, if we look at how things are playing out here, Elvin Goulart, former national champion out of Shelton, uh, Connecticut, 17th fastest in this session, and he had... You know, and he was all the way towards the back of the field uh, in uh, uh, after our morning qualifying session that he did not set a qualifying time at all for the Saturday race. Uh, let's see, Travis Wiley in the number 77 machine. Uh, just recently now, we, we still show him as being from Austin, Texas, but, uh, uh, but uh, he is from... Uh, now from Charlotte, North Carolina. And by the way, the, the red flag now being withdrawn, that is going to restart the, uh, restart the clock. And drivers are being released back onto the course with uh, just about eight and a half minutes left to go in qualifying. But if we take a look here, Todd Burris, 27th fastest. Todd was our national champion here uh, at Virginia International Raceway back in 2019. Jim Drago, two-time national champion, 28th fastest. Uh, Connor Zilich, who we were just talking about a few moments ago, 30, 30th fastest. Uh, as we uh, walk down through here, uh, some local talent that we know, Dan Conway, 36th fastest. Uh, let's see, who else? Well, Preston Partis doesn't even have a lap today. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> he has uh, yet to complete a lap. Jeremy Butts, 56th today. Amy Mills, 59th. Uh, Pre yeah, Preston Partis doesn't even have a lap in the books. Maybe that's why he was uh, he he was checking in on the chat earlier. He really wasn't at the track. <laughs> oh, my, 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 I my. I mean, it's got to be, I, I, again, and I totally understand. I totally agree. It is so disappointing. Uh, and, and look, now, what does that do? Well, when they took the black flag for the second time here, Greg, that puts McTutus and Danny Stain in the back. back of this field. So now you're having to, you know, again, be even more cautious. And that actually is going to 
going to cause probably somewhat of a little bit of an issue, you know, on the uh, – for yeah, Sunday. Yeah, it, it's it's definitely going to be problematic. And uh, uh, taking a look at the chat, want to thank uh, Antonio Abram, who's a Specking Auto driver here from uh, uh, the Southeast Division, drives for Panic Motorsports. And, and yeah, Antonio, why aren't you on track for this? Oh, and he says his <laughs> cylinder one lost compression yesterday. So there is your answer. Uh, Elvin Goulart and uh, once again the 67 machine uh, looking to, uh, to sit back and wait until the field uh, pulls off. Uh, and uh, the 67, David Nagler, uh, they are, I think, waiting to, uh, to play the field and, uh, you know, get a nice gap so that they can work together and uh, hopefully draft together and set some fast times. They're going to be getting underway here in just a few moments. As a matter of fact, they've just now rolled, uh, rolled off. Well, neither one of them have really completed a lap today yeah. either, right? So, you know, a again, this is, a, this is a tough situation with this many cars, the way the weather is. Dan Conway coming down through the uh, roller coaster now. Um, and I think he's the first car out, so he's probably going to get a pretty decent lap here in the next, uh, you know, if not this lap, probably the next lap, um, you know, by himself there being out front. Hopefully he can buy the start-finish line. So you know when they... Uh, when that went green, uh, it was time to go. All right, and looks like Brian. I think we had a car go off uh, at the top of the roller coaster once again, and all is oh, there's uh, off two the cars, press. and they parked right next to each other. So it looks like we're paying for parking out there. That's so. right. And you know, we'll have to see. Connor Zillich, I believe, was the first car off the pit lane, and uh, he is all by himself. No cars in front of him, and he's got about 30 cars behind him. Uh, I just watched coming out of Oak Tree. Danny Stain's got like six cars. Uh, he's got two of them to his right as they're, go, as they're yeah. going up towards uh, the top of the roller coaster there, and they're going to end up with a lot of that, uh, a lot of that traffic. Uh, and it looks like, actually, I just saw Preston Partis. Preston Partis is out in the qualifying <laughs> session. Yeah, but will he get a lap? It's that, going to depend is, on what happens that is up the there question. at the roller coaster. You can see it there on your screen. You know, one of them is the red machine. It looks like a white. That may be even a gray. I'm not exactly sure. But now we're going to go We're going to go too wide, Greg, in the rain to try to get a, a lap completed here. Um, some of Brian Henderson thinks better of that, uh, that nonsense and backs out of that, just let that go. But... Uh, I think that's probably the, the wise uh, deal, but you have to take a look at some of these times because it does look like people are getting some times in. Yeah, indeed. So uh, we'll see here. I am still showing Raiden Nickel uh, as your fastest driver, but uh, let's go and uh, and verify that as Nickel just crossed. Uh, now William Lambros uh, from Northport, New York, driver with the number seven machine. He goes to the top of the leaderboard with a 243-275. Jeremy Fletcher out of St. Cloud, Florida, driver of the number 22 car. He is six tenths off at a 243.87. Then Raiden Nickel, Ben Meyer, Austin Farr, Connor Zillich did just set his fastest lap at 245.2. That's for sixth. And Nick Bruni, seventh. And Brian, here we go. Checkered flag is now being displayed on the session. And so these last flying laps, I'm going to say that they're going to count. But these drivers, most of them know that there is a uh, local caution up at the top of the 14. And I think we just had another car go off at the top of the roller coaster, Brian. Uh, the extended tire wall driver, 14, uh, drive, it is uh, to, the, to the right, uh, to the right of uh, uh, the turn in for 14. And it sounds like it may possibly be uh, the 72 machine of Connor Zillish. Mm. Uh, so, and uh, apparently that that driver is trying to uh, to get it off the tire wall and continue. Uh, but it is uh, driver's right as we're looking at the uh, uh, this shot at the top of the roller coaster. It's actually back pri uh, to the left of where our timing tower is. Well, I tell you what, looking at the timing right now, Dan Conway just now at the top of your leaderboard right now with a 239 flat. And, so well, not, not, and, and not, now Junior not, Brock. <laughs> Sk yes, yeah, Skip Brock Jr., who, by the way, was in our chat earlier today. So uh, Skip Brock out of Birmingham, Alabama, Bama, uh, driving for OPM Autosports, is our new provisional pole sitter uh, here on his last going lap. He turns in a 239 flat. Almost, uh, almost 78 hundreds of a second up on Jonathan Davis with uh, Frankie Barroso, Stuart McAleer rounding out your top four. 
Ford Motherland is uh, fifth right there sitting right now. Again, I have to see how long, you know, because these guys are going to be able to complete their, you know, their last lap. And again, knowing the roller coaster's got that, got that yellow, it's going to be a little bit tough to, uh, to get that just, you know, that, that best lap you're going to get because you're going to have to slow down there coming in. But, you know, you'd be able to pick it back up. And I don't really know if you want to completely picked up. We got a little bit of drafting going on. Preston Partis finally gets a really good lap in. He looks like he's going to be 17. Well, uh, and Brian, big, big changes here on the last flying laps coming out. Charles McTutis now crossing the stripe. A 238 flat. That is good for provisional pole. Brian Henderson in the number 97 machine. He's now with a 238-3-1. That is 31 hundredths off of McTutis' times. That's good for second. Rafael Abdullali with a great day for him. He was third fastest in the morning qualifying, setting the grid for our sprint race tomorrow. He is currently third fastest today or this afternoon for the Sunday feature race uh, with a time of 238.369. Skip Brock Jr., who had just been at the top of the leaderboard a moment ago uh, in the number 61 machine, he now finds himself in fourth. And then Nick Bruni, our reigning national champion, fifth fastest. So Bruni uh, scheduled to start eighth uh, tomorrow morning and uh, fifth on Sunday. Raiden Nickel, who had been at the top of the order here, uh, for the majority of the session, Brian finds himself in sixth. Jonathan Davis, seventh. Uh, Lambros, who was sitting second for a while. Uh, eighth fastest, Frankie Barroso and Sam Craven. And, you know, and again, if we go and take a look through this, list, first off, Ford Munderland, who had been sitting up towards the top of the order, Brian, now 14th fastest. Dan yeah. Conway, 15th. So some big changes here at the end. Nick Leveroni who is our uh, 2019 T4 national champion, 17th fastest in the session. Uh, Peter Enser, uh, who has uh, started the top five in the Super Tour here, 21st fastest. Uh, if we continue to run down through the order, Preston Pardis. So for the, the sat for the Saturday race, he did not set a time. He's going to be starting uh, probably on the back row or one of the, the back rows in a 60-plus car field. Uh, for a 25-minute sprint race and for our 14-lap uh, or 35-minute race on Sunday. Preston Hart is scheduled to start 33rd. Uh, Robbie Hines, uh, who finished second in Spec Miata at the runoffs in 2020 at Road America uh, and is a, a former T3 national champion, he's scheduled to start 37th. Uh, if we keep running down, Elvin Goulart, uh, former national champion, for, starting 45th. 44, 39, and Danny Stain. Yeah. So, again, he, top top players here. Uh, again, and, and this is where it gets really tough, Greg. And, I, we, you know, we, we've talked about this, but, you know, those are the, you know, those are the chances that you take. Yeah. Uh, Jim Drago, he's going to start 61st on yeah. Sunday. Todd, Todd, Todd Burris, who won the national championship here in 2019, Gonna start to start right next to Jim. Yeah. Starting 61st. What is that? Uh, the 30th row or 31st yeah. row? Drago starts 61st both days. Yeah. In both races. Oh. That, that's you know when you got a 25 minute lap or a 25 minute sprint race and then a 14 lap, it's gonna go quick. It's going to be hard to get a really good finish. Um, again, as you just said, with Todd Burris behind him, those two are gonna have to just work together and just you know do things that they've probably never done before. Um, again, and, and those are two drivers that can do that, right? Um, you know, in order to, to, to get the best possible finish they can. Yeah, that, I mean, that's all, that's all they can hope for at this point. Yeah. All right, so, Brian, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's wrap things up because, well, I don't know if I could take any more of this excitement <laughs> today. <laughs> All right. So here's here's the, the plan, everybody, um, as we get ready to wrap things up for the day. We've got two more days of action here at Virginia International Raceway. Hopefully two um, cleaner days of action here from Virginia International Raceway. Let's run down tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, we are going to be going live right around 8 a.m. We're going to start the day with Four qualifying sessions. We have uh, uh, the last four of our nine groups. They are going to have their second qualifying sessions to help set the grids uh, for 
the sprint races that start tomorrow. Uh, those four groups are going, they're going to be uh, our big bore group, our spec racer forward, so you don't want to miss that. Super Touring Light and Super Touring Under, another great group, and then we're going to wrap up qualifying with the Formula Enterprise 2 drivers as well as our incredibly fast prototypes here at uh, Virginia International Raceway. We are then going to have nine sprint races. These are 25-minute timed races. Uh, first race scheduled. It's going to be small bore race scheduled for 1020 a.m. and uh, going to be racing all throughout the day and then on Sunday once again we're going to have the action starting at 8 a.m. Sunday uh, 14 lap or 35 minute feature races whichever come first nine races throughout Sunday you don't want to miss it I'm going to be back Brian's going to be back Brian Bolanski will be here with us as well and so uh Let's thank the, uh, the great folks, our great producer, Brendan Kazmarek, our director, Zach Johnson, from Drive, both from Driver's Eye Live. And uh, we hope to have some, uh, some very good qualifying and racing tomorrow here from Virginia International Raceway, where you have just seen the, the first day of the 2023 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. Live from Virginia International Raceway, please, if you like what you heard and you saw today, give us that big thumbs up. Go and smash that thumbs up button and subscribe to the Sports Car Club of America YouTube channel, where we will see you at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Have a great night, everybody.